हेलो हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन सो आई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ दी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी एट द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी गुवाहाटी वु टेक दिस ऑपरचुनिटी टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस इंटरनेशनल वर्कशॉप ऑन चेंजिंग प्रेसिपिटेशन फ्लड प्रेसिपिटेशन कपल साइकिल इन द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन ऑफ इंडिया सो द प्राइमरी विजन ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप इज टू फॉस्टर ए कम्प्रीहेंसिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ चेंजिंग प्रेसिपिटेशन फ्लड प्रेसिपिटेशन कपल साइकिल्स इन द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया uh does it aims to bring together experts researchers and stakeholders and serve as a platform to exchange knowledge insights and strategies on this crucial topic the workshop is so designed for the participants to delve into the scientific mechanisms driving the changing cycles assessing their implications for the northeastern regions communities ecosystems and infrastructure as collaborative discussions can explore adaptive measures to mitigate the adverse impacts of these cycles enhancing the region's resilience to climate induced challenges so by amalgamating diverse perspectives and expertise the workshop seeks to formulate a road map for continued research informed policy making and sustainable practices that can address the evolving precipitation flood precipitation cycles in the northeast region under the shadow of climate change so with this introduction we would like to begin today's program and would like to once again uh, welcome all the distinguished speakers and experts like uh, professor b n goswami former director uh, indian institute of Trop tropical meteorology pune professor t hayashi kyoto university japan professor toru tarao kagawa university japan dr yusuke yamane tokoha university japan professor subhashish datta iit guwahati professor uh, dr pravin k thakur uh, from isro dehradun uh, dr vasudev biswal iit bombay uh, who have uh, kindly accepted our invitation to be a part of this workshop today i would also like to wel welcome professor sk dwivedi uh, professor and former head department of mechanical engineering iit guwahati professor tv bharat professor and uh, department of civil engineering and head center for education technology iit guwahati and professor suresh a kartha uh, professor of department uh, civil engineering and head center for sustainable water research who has also kindly joined us today to be a part of this event so now uh, we would like to formally inaugurate the event and invite all the dignitaries and speakers to join us on the dais for the saraswati vandana to begin today's program uh, so please if you would join us in the dais to inaugurate the event
we would also take this opportunity to release a book on the recent trends in river corridor management edited by uh, Professor Subhashish Datta sir and Dr. Vinay Chambulu from IIT Jammu and would invite Professor Hayashi sir and Professor Goswami sir to do the honors. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would now like to invite Professor Datta, sir, to say a few words to open today's event. Good afternoon to all. I am really feel uh, privileged to hear uh, to start these uh, discussions on precipitation plot, precipitation coupled cycles. The words as indicates it that most of the times when you have a engineering hydrology, you start the cycles from precipitations and the leave the cycles at the either in a sea or in the wetland. But we are debating it with a new technology available with us, like the space technology which available to us now. We can look at the cycles, the precipitations, plot and precipitations. The coupled cycles, that's what is named, what I put it uh, with my almost 20 years experience as an academia and almost 25 years experience as academicians and uh, as a researcher. It's a really, it's a, uh, for me, I'm just completing a 25 years uh, as a researcher and academia. And it's a quite privilege today because we say today is a teacher's day. We celebrate in India. And looking this, uh, the problems, uh, if you look at uh, especially not only, non, only the Northeast regions, but particular to at the global levels, uh, we are facing the, the signatures or the indicators or the precursors of the climate change. So the time has come you to look at the process what is happening it at different cycles. So we are talking about these cycles in more details. We have a series of presentations up to 5.30. So for uh, with me, uh, I really privilege Professor B.N. Goswami is with us. Professor Hayesi, whom I met it almost 15 years back uh, in a conference in Silang, uh, Nehu Silang. So still he is active even if from retired from Kyoto universities. Not la, uh, I should mention Professor Teratarao. Okay, he is a really leading figures now looking after ACF precipitations. Today we have with, so uh, looking that uh, and looking this participation response and my uh, group, what we have been doing uh, day and night for these workshops. Uh, really it's a quite interesting is that uh, in these workshops we'll have a, offline mode or the present in these rooms will be close to the 70s. So we'll have a full crowded of these rooms. Another 100 plus they are attending through online. So in a very short time, so getting 170 participants to debate over this topic, I think it's a really interesting for us and uh, we can understand it, how the implications of this process and uh, I'm really happy to inform you that if you look at the statistics of 100 participants who are there, they are across the India, even if one participant from Bangladesh. So across the India, the scientists are there, the professors are there, and the research scholars all are there. And the basic idea is for us is today is to start the debate. The science is start the debating it. So we are 
just starting a debating about these coupled cycles. I just request uh, those that are there in online mode, please post the questions or try to interact with us. And also those, those are here in, the, in these rooms, please interact with our expertise, what we have. And this is a discussion. This is a started discussion. As we started the climate change discussion, similar way, let us start discussing how these processes are happening. It. And if you know that if there is a change in precipitation, flood precipitation cycles, many things are going to change it. And whether we have a, a position to accept that change, that's one basic question raise it. Second question raise that if you accept the changes, then you can't foresight it. What are the problems is going to come it? So today meetings is that let us accept the change. Okay, let us accept there is a changing of precipitation, flood precipitation cycles, as particular to the northeast regions. So please accept that one. That's what it's all. Professor B N Goswami, myself, Professor Haisi, we will try to show it with the evidence. Okay, how the changing things are happening it. And once you have accept the changing, you yourself can find out what will be the, after 20 years, what the positions will come in. What should be, adoption should be there. So with this small note, as we have been running on time, so let's move it uh, that way. Thank you all who are hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Haisi. Uh, so, uh, as Sir has mentioned, the next couple of hours we would indulge into an intensive discussion to understand this integrated precipitation flood precipitation cycle in Northeast India with seven keynote addresses from pioneers and experts in this discipline and more than 100 participants who are present here and also connecting online. The keynote addresses will be followed by a brief uh, question answer discussion session, followed by a panel discussion and closing remarks. We would also like to hold a small quiz by circulating an online link mentioning some questions where all participants can register their responses that will help us understand your feedback about the key take takeaways from this workshop. So uh, without uh, further ado, we would like to begin the lectures for today's program. Uh, so the first uh, three uh, keynote addresses will be chaired by Professor Dvivedi sir. Uh, we would like to invite him on dais. Uh, so the first uh, keynote address of the program is by Professor B. N. Goswami, sir, who is a renowned Indian meteorologist, the former director of the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology and the Pisarati Chair Professor at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Pune. Professor Goswami is a Serb Distinguished Fellow of the Government of Cotton University in Guwahati. He obtained his PhD from a Physical Research Laboratory under ISRO in Ahmedabad and was a postdoctoral fellow at MIT, Cambridge, USA, and NASA GF, uh, GSFC, US. Returning to India, he worked at the Center for Atmospheric Sciences at IIT Delhi and the Center for Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences, IISC, Bangalore, between 1985 to 2006. He served as the director of IITM Pune between 2006 and 14, and was also a visiting professor at the University of Maryland and Princeton University. Professor Goswami has received numerous awards and recognitions for his contributions in the field of metrology and climate science, among which the most prominent are Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award, Hari Om Ashram Predit Vikram Sarabhai Award, Kamal Kumari National Award for Science and Technology, National Award at Atmospheric Sciences and Technology by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, and the Kalpati Ramakrishna uh, Ramanathan Medal by INSA. He is a fellow of the Indian Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Sciences, Indian National Science Academy, and the Indian Meteorological Society, and a member of several national and international commissions and committees. So on behalf of everyone here, I would like to welcome Professor B. N. Goswami, sir, to enlighten us with his talk on why is May rainfall over Northeast India not pre-monsoon and dynamics of the onset over Northeast India. Thank you so much. Sir.
Uh, thank you very much for the rather long introduction. Thanks, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, the title uh, title of this uh, uh, seminar is rather more complicated, but I'll talk about more simpler uh, issue. Uh, I have been working on monsoon uh, for a long time, but I realized that we we, we know very little about uh, uh, the northeastern uh, yeah, monsoon or the climate of the northeast. Uh, and for the last uh, several years, I have been looking at there are some very fundamental issues about the northeast climate that we still don't know, particularly related to the precipitation. So my uh, I mean connection is to the precipitation, but I'll address some basic fundamental issues about the precipitation and this organization in this northeast region. So. Uh, this work is uh, is uh, uh, is with a couple of my students at uh, uh, at uh, 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 Cotton. Um, uh, so this this work is still not published. This is just something new. What we are looking at is how do we define the monsoon season in the northeast region? I think this has not been. It is uh, uh, see it make my sound very uh, uh, funny, but uh, for a long time, for 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 all these years, hundred years, uh, we think that the monsoon season here is June to September. Everywhere else, like everywhere else, but it turns out that that is not so. And this is something that uh, we have recognized now that monsoon season over here is longer. It's actually from May to October, almost October, from middle of May to middle of October, more than five months rather than four months. So that makes a very big difference in terms of the rain uh, water budget uh, and its implications on various other things. And in terms of actually driving the monsoon, we need to understand how May to September rainfall varies and how how it is connected with different drivers, which we have not been doing. So we don't even understand how the climate of this region is being driven by different drivers. So more of a fundamental uh, question. But the question is, why is uh, why people have been thinking about uh, the May, May rainfall as not a monsoon rainfall, but pre-monsoon rainfall? We are always calling it a pre-monsoon rainfall. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so, so what we are going to do today in the next few minutes, I'll Try to uh, try to tell you that it is not really pre-monsoon rainfall, and why? And then we'll see what is the season for this uh, this uh, the monsoon rainfall season in this region. So, why is monsoon uh, uh, northeast is is important? Of course, Mont northeast in the region is of course uh, has the largest. Uh, 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 how do I uh, point that? Is there? A so, the northeast region is is one of the most uh, uh, heavy rainfall region in this country. So it is one of the major center for uh, so, uh, um, center of uh, 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 rainfall. Also, in terms of variability from year to year variation, uh, it doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to, it doesn't work there. In that, in that it will not work. It will just go inside. Take the mouse pointer. Yeah, I like it. Sure. Okay, oh, that is good. That is good. Excellent. So, uh, so on year-to-year -year variation, uh, of the, this is a special distribution of rainfall in the whole country. Now, if you see how it varies from year to year, the dominant mode of variability is such that uh, it, 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 it changes uh, sort of in opposite sign from northeast and the rest of the India. When northeast is, uh, is, is deficient, the rest of the India will be heavy. And on the other way around, when it is more rain over the rest of India, will have uh, less rain in this. But it, more or less, it is not a very strong relationship, but it is it is out of phase, uh, almost out of phase. So this is a very important node of internal variability. So still, uh, uh, in that context, if you see the total rainfall in this region, this is the annual cycle of rainfall. So the uh, uh, and 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 this uh, this one is annual cycle of rainfall over central India, which is the major part of rainfall. Okay, I mean, the major monsoon region. And in the northeast, the annual cycle is like this. So you can see clearly that the annual cycle is much uh, intense and wider. And uh, most importantly, you see the May rainfall is, uh, is much larger than the June rainfall in central India. That is where June monsoon onset takes place in central India. Okay, uh, but uh, 
uh, but we don't consider monsoon this much rain over northeast we don't consider monsoon rain the argument is that the thing that the character of the rain is different because pre monsoon is uh, rain comes from isolated thunder showers and uh, people have been assuming that all the rain in the may in northeast also comes from th isolated thunder showers but that is impossible because this much rain is, is cannot come from isolated thunder showers but also the organization of the rain does not take place uh, isolated thunder showers are very small scale suppose there are a few showers here and there it will not produce a large rainfall area uh, distributed rainfall so but our rainfall is very much distributed even in in the in the in the, uh, may so these are some important questions uh, that we are, um, i'm not going to read them the point is that i'm going to try to convince you that uh, the may rainfall is not uh, uh, but it is uh, 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 it is monsoon rainfall now uh, how do i uh, say that there, it has to be uh, 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 it is a uh, it is because of uh, uh, this reason i mean what is monsoon basically the monsoon is essentially is is essentially what, normally how we understand monsoon is 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 the northward migration of this rain belt known as the itcz so seasonal migration of rain then produces monsoon so always we have been thinking that northeast also monsoon should be due to seasonal migration of the itcz but the itcz is not there in may may itcz is still very close to the equator so then people have been thinking that no maybe it is not monsoon but but monsoon actually not necessarily connected to itcz monsoon is nothing but an off equatorial heat source and it produces the seasonal difference in the rainfall seasonal uh, 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 reversal of rainfall with with summer and dry winter associated with seasonal reversal of wind that is basic monsoon monsoon has to be an off equatorial heat source and and it has to change the rainfall when this heat source is not there so when heat source is established rainfall is, uh, winds are in one direction when heat source uh, retreats back from there the rainfall is from in the other direction uh, winds are in the other direction so seasonal reversal of winds coupled to seasonal reversal of rainfall associated with an off equatorial heat source is monsoon that is a fundamental monsoon so does it fit that may may rainfall fit to this if this fits to this definition then you should call rainfall uh, so that is what and in fact it does because if you see the may rainfall uh, uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, so uh, if you see the may rainfall in this region is is actually organized and it produces a heat source uh, uh uh in in month of may and the winds are now uh, now the uh, river, uh, in the northwesterly in this region we are bengal so it has satisfied that more or less that condition that uh, uh, is necessary for months to be called it monsoon, monsoon it also satisfies this fact that these are the organized rainfall so this <clears throat> this heat source comes from spells of rainfall the rain in the north may in the month of may the rain comes doesn't come in just uh, one one day thunderstorm one thunderstorm here another thunderstorm there but there are spells where the spells have distributed rainfall this is a distribution of rainfall in one of the such spells successive days see one day this much rain is there all over the place there is rain so, and then the next day also there is rain in fact intense rain suppose there are thunderstorms thunderstorms are only 5 hours duration or 6 hours duration thunderstorms cannot produce persistent rain and a distributed persistent rain so this rain is coming from a system the system which is of a synoptic scale large scale some large scale systems are producing this rain now the question is where does this large scale system come in the in month of may it's low and low pressures and depressions are not formed over the bay of bengal but something is organized thing this now what is that uh, organizing this is what we have to understand so this is organized persistent rainfall in may therefore i call it non monsoon so non organized persistent which leads to a monthly mean uh, heat source which is like monsoon heat source so therefore it is all conditions that it should be a, a, a monsoon is satisfied by this so uh, uh, so next uh, this this is essentially uh, um, uh, if you look at lot uh, rainfall for the whole uh, some 40 30 years of 
data that we, we looked at, uh, it comes in spills. In fact, this, uh, and those, you can see those, you know, these are anomalies which are normalized by the standard deviation and more than one standard deviation is like, you know, spills. Those spells, there are a lot of uh, active spells. So just like in the monsoon season, there are also active and break spells in the pre, uh, in month of May. Uh, so all these are, are are conditions that are now. If we now look at some of those spells and actually look at uh, take take many of these spells and see, are these spells organized every time or they are due to different uh, different. So, so I took composite of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, composite of rainfall uh, anomalies during such spells of many many spells. Now, if the spells are not organized, then this will be dissipated, right? The composite will be very poor. But look at that composite for uh, successive five days; they are all organized and stay there. And all in all these spells, they are organized. It is not that in one spill it is there, not the other. So otherwise, I will not get a picture like that. And associated with that, I have a cyclonic rainfall, cyclonic wind vorticity, a cyclonic vorticity at low level. So there is some circulation which is helping this. So the circulation cyclonic vorticity at low level produces convergence, and that convergence is, is essentially helping keeping this organized. So there is a dynamical support for that. Now, where does this uh, uh, vorticity comes from? So this is the next question. So, uh, so if you look at the break spells, the one dry spells, dry spells are also very organized. That means there is no rain all over the, in the Northeast region during dry spells, just like now we are having. Now we are having a dry spell. This dry spell, almost everywhere there is no rain, right? Whether it's Sipsagar or Guwahati, no rain. There may be little here thunderstorm, very localized thunderstorm here and there, but overall there is no rain. So that is the kind of condition that you have a break spell. So both break and active spells are organized. So, so therefore, the uh, question is why, uh, <clears throat> now this is summarized, I have already said that uh, this is all these characters, it, it, uh, it is organized, it is persistent, and therefore we must, and they come in spells, therefore they cannot be due to isolated thunderstorms, and therefore uh, we must call this bear rainfall as, as monsoon rainfall. Having said that, we have to, uh, we have to, we can then, uh, we can then define a, a sort of monsoon season once we accept that. Okay. So, uh, so having the, uh, so there is a way to define objectively now. So now we uh, now, uh, having established that the main rainfall is monsoon rainfall, I can define a, a, a rainy season over no, uh, northeast region by, uh, by an objective method. Some objective method we have developed long time ago, and we have used the same method in terms of what is known as the gradient of tropospheric temperature, tropospheric temperature in this region. Uh, uh, so this is a heat source, monsoon heat source. The, uh, so uh, um, when this heat source is established and the, the heat source to the south becomes weaker, then the tropospheric temperature changes sign. And that is when the monsoon onset takes place. And that is the philosophy behind this. And uh, so we use that over this. Uh, we had done that before on the whole, India as a whole, but now we are doing it over the Northeast region, uh, especially. And that also satisfies the same kind of condition. And what happens is, so this is the tropospheric temperature gradient, which changes sign here. So the onset takes place somewhere here around uh, 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 middle of May. Uh, uh, if you take different data sets, it turns out to be around so 13, 14 May to about 18 May, somewhere around that time it, it takes place. So, and uh, and that is associated with several interesting dynamical factors. So along this, uh, uh, at this time, it appears that the, uh, the northward transport of moisture in this Bay of Bengal, so this heat source gets established, the rainfall uh, produces strong heating, and that heating then attracts moisture from Bay of Bengal, 
and increases the moisture transport by a factor of four to five. Just like over the Arabian Sea, when monsoon onset takes place, the moisture, moisture transport to the uh, land become increases by a factor of five to six. Exactly the same thing happens over Bay of Bengal during the onset. And this is also confirms that the onset is uh, uh, correct. So that way we have defined the, 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 the length of the rainy season. So when this uh, the, the tropospheric temperature goes back to the Negative. That means the heat source has become stronger to the south and the winds will uh, change sign. And therefore, withdrawal would take place at this point of time. So the, the time between onset and withdrawal is the length of the rainy season. And it turns out that it is, it is about 155 days. It is not just 122 days that we, uh, that we thought before. So that is essentially is the main crux of our but one fundamental question is still remaining. Uh, so what produces that organized motion and produces the rainfall? So there is no low pressure area, nothing, but how does this rainfall take place? So this is a very interesting dynamical question. And that is what something we uh, uh, we looked at. So we looked at what is the circulation that actually can affect, uh, but I will not go into great details, uh, uh, but... <clears throat> Uh, but one, we find that on May, there is uh, the mean conditions are governed by uh, the multi decade variability driving like the, um, uh, like the AMO, because our mean is never steady, right? The mean has a multi decadal variability, and multi decadal variability is associated with Atlantic, uh, North Atlantic, uh, multi decadal oscillation. And associated with that, uh, the circulation has a cyclonic vorticity in this sitting over us actually in the upper atmosphere and that has a that has a uh, that has a sort of barotropic structure it gives an ambience on which uh, uh, the circulation at the low level can can be uh, uh, can be established uh, which can interact with the mountain and drive this uh, uh, this uh, um, heat source so and that is what we have uh, sort of unraveled uh, uh, so if we look at also the internal variation of rainfall over the north northeast, suppose the May rainfall, uh, this is the uh, uh, internal variation of May rainfall. If I regress that with the 200 uh, hectopascal winds and geopotential, it also shows that, uh, so whenever there is high rainfall, there is a cyclonic vorticity on the upper atmosphere. So it is always associated to higher rainfall in this region, is always associated with a, a, a cyclonic vorticity at the upper atmosphere. and. Uh, so these are something that we learned. Uh, but most interestingly, that uh, the large scale drivers like the El Nino also, also, also affects the, uh, the uh, modulations. And this modulation takes place through the ENSO will uh, essentially produce a, during an El Nino, it will produce a, a anticyclonic circulation at the low level. So this anticyclonic circulation at the low level will affect that background. So it will suppress the initiation of monsoon a little bit. And then in the La Nina phase, it will be a, like opposite cyclonic circulation in the low level. And that will enhance the background uh, vorticity and will help in this early, early onset. So that, that way, El Nino can introduce uh, variations uh, 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 in the onset uh, uh, dates. So, uh, uh, so how does that in a specific year, every year the onset dates are different. Now, how does, because that is, that the, all these things are stationary, stationary vortices that I am talking about, whether associated with El Nino or associated with this uh, AMO, they are stationary in the month of May, they tend to be like that. But on a particular day, why does the on onset take place on a particular day? What produces? In other words, in, on that particular day, in, uh, uh, the, uh, the large scale cyclonic vorticity must be enhanced by some factor. And that seems to happen through transient Rossby waves from the extratropics. So actually, our onset in the Northeast does take place not by uh, tropical dynamics, but it is controlled by, largely controlled by extratropical dynamics. So extratropical Rossby waves keep moving. Okay. And some of these extratropical Rossby waves intrude southward. And through the change in the potential vorticity, uh, and they, they can generate low level cyclonic vorticity. Uh, if the potent, potential vorticity is outward, extension takes place, and it downward uh, uh, intrusion takes place, and that can generate uh, uh, this uh, low level cyclonic vo relative vorticity. And that is exactly seem to have happened. So if I look at 
Now I take this uh, composite of uh, mm, uh, average over uh, the vorticity, uh, uh, potential vorticity average over this region, and I take uh, onset dates of all the different terms, some 30 years of onset dates, take onset date as the reference point, go some seven days before and go seven days after, and do composite of uh, potential vorticity. And then from that, if you plot as a vertical as a section, sort of as a vertical section of that, as a function of uh, days relative to the onset, it turns out that the potential vorticity sort of intrudes from the stratosphere to troposphere, and it is like a, it is something mostly associated in one of those Rossby waves. So, and then when it reaches this point uh, at the time of onset, it produces a potential positive. Pot potential vorticity at low level. This positive potential vorticity comes from generating relative vorticity at the low level because the vortex stretching produces that, uh, that relative vorticity at the, at the low level. So now associated with that, this is what is shown the, the relative vorticity. If I take uh, uh, average over this region, the relative vorticity used to be like uh, one into 10 to the power minus six uh, per second. Then at the time, that these relative, these um, potential vorticity intrusion uh, enhances the by a factor of relative vorticity by a factor of three or so, and that is where these winds become very strong. So the strong wind um, vort uh, cyclonic vortex interact with these mountains and produce upward motion and produces the convective activity. So it is not true. Uh, that is. Uh, that is very interesting. So you can see now uh, this, this Rossby waves, you can see this composite again, I have shown here uh, for um, as, a com as, as, a, as, a, as a, with respect to the onset date, you can see that uh, Rossby wave traveling eastward and it has passes through on the time of once, just the day before onset, it has intruded to our region. And after that, it has passed through it. And this is composite of about 30 different years of data. And it is a so prevailing Rossby wave. So in other words, in other words, every time there is a onset, there seems to be a Rossby wave which has made some impact. And that is very interesting because again, this composite, I would not have seen this very nice propagating Rossby waves if the Rossby waves did not affect every time. So this is a very interesting, I think, new thing that we have learned. Uh, uh, so it is very, uh, uh, so this is how it happens. So normally, uh, uh, normally uh, 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 during the, uh, there is no no synoptic normal synoptic systems during this time, uh, but there is like a synoptic system circulation is available in the low level. Uh, um, uh, cyclonic vorticity is available. That cyclonic vorticity uh, uh, comes from extratropical Rossby waves. So it is dynamically. Lows and depressions are different. They are from instability of the shear flow. And then instabilities get, uh, get energized by the convective uh, uh, free convection. But this is where it is driven by the extratropical Rossby waves. Then we produce forced convection. It is like almost, uh, uh, almost extratropical system. So it produces forced convection with the uh, with the mountains. It is not dynamically forced, but mountains help. So the mountains in this region are very crucial, very, very important. And that is why uh, this onset could take place. Also by, 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 uh, by May, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I'll conclude. So I think we have learned something very interesting um, that uh, uh, that the, there is a fundamental difference in defining the season in the monsoon in uh, northeast region, and we have also learned how uh, the rainfall can be organized with the with the uh, 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 in this region with the help of the mountains. But we need we don't need uh, convective instability or uh, shear instability. Vorticity is enhanced in the low level that can interact with the mountains, and the mountains, the horseshoe shaped mountains, uh, is, is just ideal to create two bands of rain in this region separated by just 100 kilometers. So it makes like a big, a big heat source. So that is uh, uh, very interesting, and it helps that uh, in May we have plenty of moisture. So this thing can can take place. Normally, see there is uh, and. Uh, 
Dr. Datta and others studied that a lot of evapotranspiration takes place in during this time. So therefore, we have um, me, um, humidity content here is, is like 22, the climatological is like more than about 22 grams per kilogram. Out of that, maybe six or seven comes from this evapotranspiration. On the, on the other hand, in May itself, but in, in central India, in May, the, uh, the, the, the humidity is like 14. So that is why that cannot produce. And of course, the central India dynamics is different. There is subsidence taking place. There is no possibility of convection, no mountains. Nothing can help them. Here, we have the mountains, we have humidity, and the extra tropical residues gives the push. So we have onset. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, uh, yes and no, but, but we had an universal definition, but we need to revise it. We have to tweak it. <laughs> so I think uh, we have been kind of closed. Um, and no, I think the reason is, myself included, uh, did not look at um, noticed so closely for a long time because it's a small area. Now, global community doesn't have an interest in going deep into this, right? So, uh, so uh, but being here now over the last six years, I have realized that I myself have not looked at it. No, I think I need it. So, <laughs> so, 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 but I realize that there is, there is fundamental things that we need to, to need to clarify in this region. That is what exactly part of this comes from the local evapotranspiration because we have a lot of vegetation. Huge, I mean, the large, uh, big trees and larger areas covered by trees. These have a lot of evapotranspiration, and about six to seven uh, grams per kilograms come from that. Also, the other scam comes from all the dynamics, diffusion, advection, and other things have a background of about 12, 13. You can have, but you need that extra. That extra is 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 where it makes it much lighter. Uh, more humidity means system is much lighter, so little uh, a smaller push can produce start produce and convection. So if you have uh, winds which will push it against the mountains, you can start the convection. Oh, yeah, anyway. The yes. Yeah. Uh, well, tropical uh, These are. I believe these are extratropical baroclinic waves. Uh, the, uh, the propagating waves. Uh, these are not stationary waves. Uh, so, so the stationary waves gives a background. Uh, but on the top of that, these uh, uh, transient waves, the propagating waves, which are baroclinic waves, basically. So those waves trigger this individual individually. But I feel there has been more than that, a little bit more than that. Maybe every every event may not be may not be done by these waves, waves. But there is also there is another possibility which we, we are we are exploring uh, that there is this something called a 10 to 20 day oscillation. Okay, in this region, so we start propagating 10 to 20 day oscillation also come uh, over the Bay of Bengal. And when it comes over Bay of Bengal, it also produces similar vorticity over the Northeast region. Okay, so some of these uh, may be not produced by extractive, all of them, a few of them may be due to these uh, uh, the, the bi weekly oscillation. Exactly, some years, some years. So, you, so, so, uh, not so. Initially, we thought that uh, maybe every every event, but it is a little bit unlikely that every every year a Rossby wave has to have southward extension and then downward intrusion and so on and so forth. So, so it may not happen. So, if that is not happened, there is other possibilities also there. So, uh, therefore, it can it can maybe a little delayed or or, or early because of this. But uh, these uh, these two dynamical possibilities uh, are there. Thank you. We'll check uh, for the discussion session. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for this enlightening talk. Uh, I'm sure the lecture has invoked many queries and thoughts among the participants here. 
and uh, many of them wants to interact with you but uh, i would request all of you to be a bit more patient and note down all your queries uh, so th as you will get an opportunity to interact with all our distinguished speakers at the end of all the talks during the discussion session uh, so now for our second keynote address, I would like to invite Professor Subhashish Datta, sir, uh, former head and professor, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Guwahati, who is also the organizer and host of this event. Sir has been working in the Department of Civil Engineering, uh, IIT Guwahati, since 2012. He, uh, his major research interests are hill slope hydrology, uh, distributed hydrological modeling and impact of climate change, flood inundation, modeling, geospatial uh, technology, bank erosion, 2D river flow and sediment transport modeling, river bank protection and stormwater drainage uh, design. He has over 100 publications in leading international journals and conferences. He has also developed uh, NPTEL courses on fluid mechanics and river mechanics for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. He is also a lead scientist and part of many national and international projects related to water resources management. So I would welcome sir. Okay, so very good afternoon to all. So I, my job is quite easy after Professor uh, Ben Goswami lectures. Uh, I do believe it because many are, uh, uh, most of the years are the civil engineers. Uh, so that way, uh, I, I will take a, another evidence as a hydrologist from the field, from the river discharge steps, whether we are getting any evidence to have a early monsoons, yes or no. So my uh, topics today uh, to just figure you that from the discharge data series, from the evapotranspiration data series, whether we are getting the signals that the northeast regions, the monsoon starts early, it's a May month, and ends in the, the month of, uh, of uh, September or the October. Or as a civil engineer, we talk about hydrological years. So in generally, the hydrological year starts in other part of the, our countries in the month of June to June, uh, May. But in the Northeast, I will introduce you is that the April onwards, our hydrological year starts in Northeast regions. So I will talk about these two concepts that the same concept that the Northeast regions are special regions, as Professor B. N. Gursami already talked it, I will take forward that to the next level, considering the hydrological aspects point of view. Uh, look at this way. Uh, first, what I'll be. Hmm. Okay. So let's let's look at the data. And if you look at the data, what I'm showing to you, it, it it's quite interesting data. What I've been uh, showing to you. Uh, Where is that? Crosser. Oh, oh, okay. So if you look at the uh, the hydrology, looking this river discharge as point, if you look at that, uh, interestingly, we have the first flood waves in April month. The flood which gets in the month of the April, and followed by we have uh, the floods in the May month, June and July and August. These are the observed data series at the Guwahati locations. So these are the things that what is happens in these regions. You used to have a six to seven flood waves, and these flood waves are related to the wet spells. They are not to the a one or two days events. Basically, these flood waves are related to that. What do we observe it when you do the time series analysis of these flood waves? On average, we used to have a 10 to 12 days flood. So it is a quite in interesting. It doesn't have a flood for one or two days. The flood happens for 10 to 12 days. And the point is coming is that when we have the one flood waves, let's be in the month of the April, does that flood wave controls the next subsequent flood? Or do have some residues also controls that? 
what it happens to the evapotranspiration from the terrestrial regions. That part will be highlighting that next. If we look at it, we, uh, as a hydrologist, we run the simulations models almost 150 years, 115 years, and we try to look at it from 1901 to 2012 and look at the peak discharge when it is have extreme gradients. And quite interestingly, from 112 year data sets, it again proves that the definitely the monsoon starts in the May month. It's not the April month, okay? It's not the June month. Monsoon starts from this. And these are what the discharge series. If we can look at, this is a 112 years discharge data series. And you can easily see these flood waves and the monsoon starts from here. It's a month of the May monsoon starts. It's no doubt there will be year to yearly variations will be there. A weekly deviation or fortunately de weekly deviations will be there in a monsoon onset. But the, our hydrologic data, what we have done simulations for 112 years, that also indicates the same trend. Next. Look at the floods. So most of the times, okay, who are being attending this class, uh, these uh, lectures from not in northeast regions, outside the northeast regions, they cannot feel it that how much a flood happens to the, especially to the Assam. Whenever you have the floods, the floods affects in terms of million people. It's not the effects in a few thousands. So whenever we have the flood in the northeast regions, it affects the million people. The 10 year return period floods can inundate the 40% of Assam valleys, huge area. Just to think it, the huge area is flooded by 10 year return period floods. The floods in the Assams, it makes very different. And if you look at this, the flood extent map, which is prepared from satellite data, it, 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 it just shows it everywhere we have the water, nothing else, okay? Everywhere you have the water either in a paddy field or flood inundation areas, or you have wetlands. So as soon as the monsoon starts it, you can see that there are everywhere you have the waters. So, and if you look at the flood propagation, it's very clearly showing it from upstream to downstream, and the peaking also the flood wave, you can say in my month also, again showing the flood waves. And that's what is propagating from Diburgar, the upstream to downstream up to Dhubri. Next. Now, if we look at uh, this is what my students who is working in Space Application Center Ahmedabad, the real time flood, you can see it, flood inundations in Brahmaputra River, which is uh, there, you can just visit the Badas, okay, is the, uh, uh, the uh, online portal, so you can go it and you can see the real flood, how it is propagating it, okay. Even if two day flood, you can see it, how it's uh, propagating, how much inundations area is happening it. All Technology we have used for this, precipitation forecast, uh, land use, land cover, all the things, all the modeling part, I'm not going through that. Next. The question is comes here, that from where that the soil water vapor comes it. Definitely one of the water vapor comes from the Bay of Bengals, which is, I don't know much, that is not my field. But if you look at the greenness of these regions, okay, all these green colors indicates for us, is the forest covers. Very critically, if you look at it, it's a huge forest covers are there in Eastern Himalayas, as well as the forest covers are there in Mizoram, Tripura, Myanmar, and all. Let us not divide that India and Bangladesh, okay, both on this. As a metallurgist, as a hydrologist, we don't divide it, and we should not divide it, okay? So if you look at the large areas involving the Myanmar, involving the part of uh, areas, uh, if I consider it is a, it's a really a one of the green area. Next slides. If you look at that, uh, this is what hydrologically different. If you look at the Tropic of Cancers, okay, which is uh, you have a desert, but only in the Tropic of Cancers where we have uh, the green areas. You just look at the Tropic of Cancers. You have uh, all deserts are there, but why you have the same the for uh, Latitudes, you have the greenery area and it's a bring the things. Definitely, we are the different. That's what is clearly indicating here. Next. 
Look at the one part while you just have to highlight these are from satellite details. The interestingly, if you look at that amount of rainfall, amount of evaporative transpiration plates at the annual scales, the plantation is highest, which is about to 80 centimeters, 800 millimeters. Okay, these are the satellite products level. Forest is 500 to 600. Always you can ask it. Why do forest have the less value than the the plantations? Agriculture 500 and the grasslands is the 500. So if you look at that, if I have the forest, there are the chance to have more evapotranspiration nest. Look at these figures. Uh, the, the, the points what I'm talking it here. Uh, if you look at that greenness of these regions, okay, and this is the month of March, okay, still greenness there. But if you look at that, the same greenness of of the mid of May, it has increased. This indicating that there is a rainfalls. The March to May, there is an increase of the greenness. That indicates that is the April month, there is a lot, lot of rainfall happens. It it increases the greenness values. If we look at these figures, which is clearly indicating for us the how these the process are happening in terms of the ET values, in terms of rainfall events. Again, it's a around 120 days. Again, we are coming back to the same peaking periods are coming in. Next. Uh, this is what uh, monthly uh, seasonal variations. I think uh, Professor Terao may bring that type of figures and can talk about to us. It's a quite interesting figure, so it's coming it. If you look at the figures, it's a quite interestingly showing it. In the March, May, there are a lot of rainfall is happening in these regions. And June, August, which is the monsoon period, and also September, October, also we have the rainfalls. But more interesting things, if you look at the monthly case, next. This figure, quite interesting. This is total regions. I have not divided it to India and Bangladesh or Bhutan's. Okay, I should not divide it. Okay, total area, if I do it, Interestingly, if you look at the black colors are uh, representing me the rainfall, okay, which is having a peaking of rainfall in March month, a small peaks, okay. But if you look at the ET values, which is increasing trends after the month of March. And very interestingly, the April is having just river, ET by precipitations is having the higher value, which is very uniqueness. That's what is giving a ET flux to the atmospheres. Okay, this is the water vapors is going to giving. This is source is what indicating here. See, even March month, if you see that the rainfall is more, it is less. But when you come it to here, you have ET is more, the rainfall is less. So that means April month, evapotranspiration is playing a major role to bring the monsoon at the month of May. That's what is the same coherent structures, what I'm telling it, but how much I don't know it. Okay, that's the biggest question. So we'll put it next. Uh, this is what I'm not going to more details that nowadays we can measure the stable water uh, isotopes from the satellite platforms. These are also indicating the same concept, but these are very coarser resolutions data, the data of 1.25 degree. Uh, grid intervals, still that the low resolution uh, data set also indicating for us. Next. Uh, this is what this, how these isotopes variabilities. Next. If you look, it's, it's a very interesting that. If you're measuring this isotopes variability in the April and May, which is are showing the dip in 2006, same way, the June, June and August, the isotopes variability shown the dips in a year of 2006, and 2006 was one of the drought years. Okay, but uh, June, July, August rainfalls. But after 2007, 8 to 12, uh, there is not much variations. The isotope signatures are indicating next. If you look at, this is a very interesting figures. If you look at the April, May isotope signatures, it indicates it from the where the water source. These signatures, if you're having value, that means it's a, a 
evapotranspiration is happening from that, the forest areas. It's a clearly indicating for us that April, May isotopes having a relations with June, August precipitate. What is happening more towards these regions? Still, in these regions, it is what quite dominating. This is having high characteristics values here. So that means the April, May evapotranspirations also have a, some sort of controls over the June, August precipitations part. Let me, uh, uh, this is same, this is what, I, I think this is what I am to summarize in graphically. The, the forest matters to us, okay? Forest gives the evapotranspiration flux. It brings the early monsoons for us. I don't know how much of fluxes comes from Bay of Bengals, okay? But the first flood, mostly it's a controlled by the forest evapotranspiration flux. Once it, the forest evapotranspiration flux is there, the flash flood waves there, that time you have a lot of waters in wetland, the agriculture fields. So they bring the second flood wave. The second flood wave brings the third flood waves. Like these cycles goes on. So that is what our idea, and that's what is the things. The forest brings the floods or the precipitation. Flood brings the forest. Again, the precipitations, these cycles is going on, okay? As of now, you know it, we have some low resolution data from the satellite imagery. We cannot quantify that accurately, how much of cycles contribute coming from different sources. But definitely, this is a research question for our younger generations to look at this aspect. Next. Uh, if you look at that, that's the reasons let you have a take home. The hydrological water here, okay? It should start from northeast regions from March, not the June. Okay. As a hydrologist in the northeast regions, our the water cycle starts from the month of March, not the June. Okay. And the second device is that the green water, which comes as a terrestrial evapotranspiration, definitely play the major roles. If you look at it, is about 80 centimeter. It goes back. And you have it, the topography, which is the Eastern Himalayas, making a one trough here. So that 80 centimeters, the cyclic process are happening it. So that way, if you look at it that way, uh, it makes a really good things. And what we have been doing a deforestation, okay, definitely this deforestation will be going to change these cycles. We have a only op option with us to control, okay, we, even if you, we don't expect the uh, climate change part, but if you change the cycle itself, we'll have a drastic consequences in terms of hydrology. Our the springs, which are main source of water availability in the Northeast offland red areas, they will not get the water. The first signatures will, will show that springs will be dry up. The signature has already started. So if we'll change the cycles, there is a more probability that we'll have a very, very less water from the springs. Once you have a less water from the spring, definitely the offland peoples, they don't have a other source of water. So livelihood, the water security in the Northeast regions really will have a big problems in the futures if we are really looking that. And uh, with this, uh, just trying to my calculate my lecture. Thank you. Any, any questions? Maybe one or two. Yeah. Yes, Professor Tera. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a very difficult. Yes. Yes. Correct. Uh, if we can put the uh, uh, meteorological towers, maybe around 100 towers, uh, then we may have the position. But I, I don't know if this government of India is going to fund that type of large projects, more than 100 crores. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. 
Yes. Many more. Yes. Yes. Only options with that, with a few uh, tower measurement, now the satellite data, we can co-orient it. We'll co-orient it and try to look it. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, any other question? Nah. Okay, thanks, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Y yes. 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 That. Thank you. Sir. I I I do it. Yeah. 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 So, sir, we have a question. Like, uh, can you please give your insights upon if rainfall starts in May and continues till October? Yes. Then how far will the soil moisture uh, be contributing in the study of vegetation and climatic factors since the moisture is in abundance uh, amount? So won't it be a nullifiable factor under study? So this is a question from a participant. Nullifying it again. Can you repeat yeah, sure, it? Sir. Uh, please give your insights upon if a rainfall starts in May and yes. continues till October. Yes. Then how far will the soil moisture be, be a contributing factor in the study of vegetation and climatic factors? Yes. Since the moisture is in abundance amount, yes. so won't it be a nullifying factor under study? Uh, if you look at there is a uh, time cycles uh, of the uh, flood waves is 12 days. It's a uh, dry and we, we did a one studies already we have published it. Uh, there is a wet spell and the dry spells. The soil moisture also goes through the down and the up. Okay, so the even if the soil moisture also controls it, that's the reason the evapotranspirance is not a fixed, the not a constant. It also varies it. The soil moisture also the plays the major roles. The point what we are highlighting it that if you look at the greenness of the forest covers is the plenty. Also the the valley is also the potential to to store the waters during the after the onset of the monsoons. So. Both are generating the high evapotranspiration flux. That is what our debate. Uh, I hope that clarifies the. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much, sir, uh, for this thought-provoking lecture. I would uh, request all the participants to have their questions written, and we will discuss that at the end in the discussion session. Uh, so thank, thank you, sir. Yeah. So. Thank you, sir. So. So uh, moving ahead, I would now like to invite our third uh, keynote speaker for today, another distinguished scientist and visionary in the field of climate research, Professor T. Hayashi from uh, Kyoto University, Japan. Uh, Professor Hayashi has immensely contributed in understanding the challenges posed by severe tropical cyclones, floods, and other extreme weather events, particularly in the coastal regions of the Bay of Bengal in Southeastern and South Asia. Throughout his career, he has been at the for forefront of translating academic insights into practical solutions. His work in sharing accumulated experiences and knowledge, particularly with countries like Myanmar, where limited expertise exists, has been instrumental in devising successful strategies for reducing damages caused by recurring disasters. Furthermore, his uh, engagement in irrigation projects in states like Assam and Karnataka and in India in uh, collaboration with the Graduate School of Agriculture at Kyoto University projects his holistic approach to disaster mitigation by addressing not only immediate consequences, but also the broader implications of climate related uh, challenges on agriculture and infrastructure. He embodies a comprehensive and forward thinking perspective. He has been the inspiration and lead scientist for many research projects, particularly to understand the precipitation systems in Asia, like the Monsoon Asia Hydro Atmosphere Scientific Research and Predictive Initiative, which is also acronymed as Mahashri, 
uh, which extended from 2006 to 16. So with this, I would now invite sir. Thank you very much for uh, introducing me to the, today's uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Taichi Hayashi of Kyoto University. I retired the uh, Kyoto University, and, but I'm now working in the other institute. Uh, I was a uh, uh, today's uh, topic is our activity of meteorological research in the northeastern Indian subcontinent. So I was working on uh, disaster prevention research institute of Kyoto University. The Kyoto University was founded in uh, 1897, the secondary oldest university in Japan. So under disaster prevention, DPLI was founded in 1951. And uh, we have uh, uh, more than uh, 70 years history. So mainly we are uh, engaging and uh, uh, meteorological disasters, uh, uh, cyclones, floods, and tornadoes, and so on. So, and uh, the now, so uh, this uh, uh, CSI is established in 1959 for the integrated research on uh, Southeast Asia. Main objective is uh, cross regional uh, studies. Now, I don't know. Why? What is the cross regional studies? There are so many, so many uh, regions <laughs> just crossing. So another thing is the political, economic coexistence, and the social coexistence, and the environmental coexistence, and the global human spheres. I I am working in uh, environmental coexistence, so I am relating to the uh, natural as uh, environment. So uh, this is my today's uh, talk is uh, my history of the work in the South Asia. So and uh, I started our, our work in the uh, uh, research in 1991. The uh, Kira Cyclone research in the Cyclone Bora. This is the first my visit to South Asia. After that, we have continuously uh, engaging the. Uh, uh, meteorological disasters, mainly uh, floods in India and Bangladesh. At first, we are engaging in the uh, Bangladesh floods. After that, we are uh, engaging together with uh, Professor Terao and uh, Professor Yamane about the uh, uh, floods and the rain, heavy rainfall. So, and now, so on the other a new project is going on together with uh, uh, Professor Terao, Asia Precipitation Experiment. This is Asia PIX. So my uh, the background, the, my why that I, I started that this uh, kind of research is the, the uh, I learned in university. So and the, the largest amount of the rainfall in the world is uh, uh, provided in the northeastern regions of the Indian subcontinent. So this is the first thing. So I was working in uh, uh, Kyoto University. So and uh, before the uh, high school age, I learned in Japan is also many rainfalls. Uh, in my hometown in the Kyushu Island, in, uh, I was very young time. So and, uh, there are so many floods. But after that, so I'm becoming a university, so there are no flood damages. So, and uh, I, I'm working in a uh, uh, DPLI. So, on the DPLI was uh, make a uh, uh, disaster prevention, disaster prevention, how to disaster prevention. So we have uh, some technologies of the how to, but the uh, Indian river, and uh, Indian subcontinent river, and the Japanese river is uh, different, completely different. And the very, uh, this uh, subcontinent river is very large, scale large, and uh, uh, so and the, the Japanese technology is not difficult to apply this area than in Bangladesh. So at that time, so and the, uh, the the one professor requested 
to me to, to join the project. To the, how to produce, how to de, 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 uh, prevent the disaster in Bangladesh. At that time, that is the first time to visit. So because the, uh, and another thing is that, uh, and uh, this uh, rainfall is the benefit to the human behavior, the water resources such as such for uh, agricultural products and uh, uh, drinking water, so on. But the uh, excess of the rainfall is, uh, and the uh, rainfall is sometimes the cause of the just of the serious flood. So and the, the most important thing is what is the rainfall mechanism in this area? So uh, I plan to. Uh, so this is the Samomusun systems. So this is a very uh, large scale systems. The Samomusun is start in the uh, uh, south of the equators and then to cross the equators on the, this uh, wind uh, system is coming to cross the uh, Arabian Sea and uh, cross the Indian Indian subcontinent. And there's heavy rainfall in the northeastern regions. Mm. So this is a uh, roughly explanation of the summer monsoon system. So and the another thing is uh, uh, another another um, cause of the uh, serious flood is uh, this area is the uh, three big rivers. In, in, I I started uh, the, my research in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is the uh, three uh, big rivers: Ganges and the Brahmaputra, Meghna. These three uh, big rivers is concentrated there. So that is a uh, 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 main cause of the uh, of the floods in Bangladesh, and at that time, so on the front, this front kind of flood is happening in in Bangladesh, and more than uh, maybe the thirty or forty percent of the uh, land was flooded in Bangladesh, and in two thousand seven. And uh, this is the two thousand four summer in the in capital Dhaka, the city was uh, inundated. There are many persons is moved to the by boat, and uh, it is very difficult. But the uh, but the drinking water is a shortage, so it is very difficult to take a, a drinking water. They are uh, make a queue. To uh, to take uh, uh, drinking waters, and some uh, embankment was eroded. So these uh, are very serious uh, damages in this time. And uh, at that time, so and uh, we are uh, watching the map of the uh, this area. So the in Bangladesh, the small countries. So the other countries, in environmental countries, is very important. the The rainfall in the in the year and, and the other uh, Assam and the Meghalaya is pulled down to the Bangladesh. So we need to uh, know the amount of the uh, uh, rainfall and what is the mechanism of the flowing to the Bangladesh. So I no. Sorry. Uh, this is the photo from the uh, Megaraya Plateau to Bangladesh area. The blue area is the uh, flooded area in Bangladesh. Most of the uh, plain was uh, covered with the water. And I visited the Meghalaya, and uh, these two places, Chirapunji and Masinam, is the largest place in the, the largest place of the largest amount uh, of rainfall in this. This is a very famous, and uh, I visited, and uh, I studied the measurement of this area. Uh, we installed the about 25 or 30 uh, rain gauges in the Assam, Meghalaya, and Bangladesh. The Bangladesh was already uh, installed 
10 ranges there. So I, I, I extended the measurement area to the Bangladesh and Meghalaya. And we installed this kind of tipping bucket rain gauge. And uh, I installed the uh, three type of rain gauges there. The one is a uh, zero point two uh, tipping bucket size is one is uh, zero point two millimeters, one is uh, zero point five millimeters, and and the another one is uh, uh, one point zero millimeters. So why the why this uh, three type is installed there? So in the in the heavy rainfall in this region, the very small amount of the uh, rain gauges, for example, 0 0.2 millimeter cannot follow the heavy rainfall. So it is some somewhat uh, underestimate. So I think that 0 0.5 or 1.0, 1.0 millimeter is uh, suitable to measure the rainfall in this area, heavy rainfall. So usually uh, sometimes that this uh, small amount of rain gauge is installed in, in some, some places because the uh, other countries, for example, European countries uh, support the uh, measurement of the rainfall. So at that time, so the, they, know, they don't have a, no experience of so such kind of experience, the so rainfall. So in this area, so 0 0.5 or 1.0 is a, a, a suitable or for this uh, measurement of the rainfall for this. The, I also installed a very small compact weather sensor and Vaisala sensor. And so this is a very compact and the wind and the uh, temperature and the relative humidity and the pressure is measured only one uh, uh, devices. So this is very, easy to install. So uh, maybe uh, Terabo-san will in introduce the next time. So and, uh, we are now planning, we are now planning to install the, this type of rainfall and the uh, uh, devices in IIT Gohati in this time. So please look uh, very near the civil engineering building. So please look uh, after that, maybe two or three days later. So uh, I will talk with you. So and uh, this is the uh, annual amount of uh, annual rainfall at Terapunji to uh, about uh, 120 years. So uh, the rainfall is sometimes the most of the year. The amount of the rainfall is uh, 10,000 millimeters, 10 meters in a year. So mainly, uh, as you know, so then the uh, rainy season is uh, from June to September, or four, four months or five months. Uh, we have no uh, experience of this rainfall in Japan. So, and this is very interesting. Another thing is that uh, first half of the last century, is the, the variation is smaller than the uh, latter half. I don't know so this one is, yeah. and uh, because of the, some 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 uh, climatological effect or something, I don't know. So I have to uh, make the research of this one. So another interesting thing in the, Gosami-san uh, told me, told, told us, uh, uh, in rainfall pattern is uh, active phase and break phase in this time, in, in this area. The, so in active phase, after the active phase, the water level of Jomuna River, Brahmatra River is increased. Uh, this is an example of the 2007. The, the, and the, after the, and in the break phase, the water level is low. So this is very interesting. Uh, very, this is a natural uh, uh, variation of the uh, rainfall and the water level change. So the water and the rainfall amount is very important to uh, forecast the uh, water level in the river waterfall, uh, water level. 
the I uh, we made the power spectrum the summer rainfall. Uh, daily summer rainfall from uh, 1981 to 2000. 2000. 2000. It is a very interesting thing in the, in, in in this area. Have uh, two peaks. One is a. Uh, One is uh, 30 to 40, 40 days, and the another one is uh, uh, 12 days. The 30 to 40 days is uh, uh, very <coughs> prevailing for the whole India. But the 20 days to 50 days, 15 days is only uh, uh, this area in so northeastern regions. So this is a very impo important, very interesting uh, phenomena in this uh, northeastern Indian phenomena. So, so and uh, this is a special as uh, a spatial distribution of annual rainfall 2007 and 2008 in Assam and about uh, uh, around the 2,000 millimeters in annual rainfall. In and uh, Meghalaya, so on the, as I told you, as I told the uh, annual rainfall is uh, more than a uh, ten thousand millimeters in a year, and then so the rainfall amount is decreasing gradually to Bangladesh. The in Bangladesh is two thousand thousand thousand. Yeah, Meghalaya is very important uh, low to the heavy rainfall in this area. I can, so today, yesterday, I read a paper in Assam Tribune. So the, this article, so it is very interesting. So and, uh, in India sees the driest every August since 91, but Northeastern exception. This area is the exception of the India. So this area, very interesting place of the Indian subcontinent. So we have to uh, make the re research this characteristic of this uh, uh, regions. Um, so this is a summary of the, this one. Uh, so the Northeast region is the Indian subcontinent is a different rainfall pattern in, in this, and the two prominent frequency 40 to 6 days and uh, 10 to 20 days periods. The, today I have not uh, told the, the another uh, interesting thing is the diurnal variation is also different in this area. So uh, rainfall peak is the, the midnight to early, early night, early morning. Nighttime rainfall is very large in this time. So uh, I have, uh, I, I'm thinking that's uh, this in, and uh, rainfall characteristic characteristic in this area is very important, interesting and important to re, to have a research. And uh, uh, now, so we have a uh, future work that so we have a uh, um, uh, research team of sub Asia hydro meteorological, meteorological, uh, climatological observation network, SOMON research group is working in Japan. The team leader is a Professor Terao. So on the, uh, I'm, I'm becoming older, so it is very difficult to continue the research. So, and uh, I, will, I, will, I will shift to the uh, main work to the uh, Terao and uh, Yamane. So, uh, and uh, I'm so happy to have an uh, opportunity to talk with you about our uh, research activities in this time. Uh, especially, I appreciate very much for the collaboration to our uh, activity in Assam with Professor Spasiva Jutta and all members of the IIT Guwahati for a long time. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, sir, for this enlightening talk. Uh, I would like to open the session for a quick one or two questions. If you have any. Quite possible. Uh, I don't think we have an idea about what is the kind of uh, in this reference. Uh, definitely, Zinke is my reference for OK. Not so so bad. I mean, I, 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 right. But the point is that sampling was poor. Mm -hmm. Now the sampling is better. better. So therefore, therefore the estimate might have an error in from the sampling. So uh, uh, IMD's ranges also did not work for long time. Mm -hmm. Especially around 1950. We need blinds were there too in that time. Uh, so. Yeah, after that, because of big, uh, big earthquake, yes, everything was damaged. Oh, for a long time, mm -hmm. it was not established. Mm -hmm. So there's a big gap. So uh, the large, uh, main problem about Zarapunji uh, is that there are a lot of gaps, uh, the past rainfall. The sample is, is okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the past variability will have these two problems. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, So uh, moving on to the next uh, set of keynote sessions, I would like to invite Professor Suresh Karthana, sir, to chair the next set of sessions. Uh, so our next uh, speaker for today is uh, Professor Toru Tarao uh, from the Kagawa University, Japan, who is a very active and esteemed scholar in the realm of uh, atmospheric and hydrospheric uh, sciences with a focus on metrology. Currently holding the position of professor at Kagawa University's Faculty of Education, Professor Tarao's academic journey has been marked by profound contributions to this field. As a member of the esteemed associations, including the American Geophysical Union, the Metrological Society of Japan, and the American Metrological Society, his work has transcended borders and disciplines. With a research focus spanning uh, the natural sciences, Professor Terao's dedication to metrology has illuminated the integrated dynamics of our atmosphere, enriching our understanding of weather patterns, climate processes, and their broader implications. His commitment to advancing knowledge and fostering interdisciplinary collaborations continues to inspire and shape the future of atmospheric sciences. Over decades, he has worked very closely to understand the precipitation dynamics in the South Asian regions, including Northeast India, Bangladesh, and Myanmar, and is one of the key contributors to understanding this mechanism. He is the lead scientist of the Asian uh, Precipitation Experiment, which is also acronymed as AsiaPEX, uh, which is the successor to GWEX Asia Monsoon Experiment and the Maharshi uh, Experiment. It was initiated in 2019 to understand the terrestrial precipitation over dynamic and diverse hydroclimatological conditions for improved predictions, disaster reduction, and sustainable development across Asia under the framework of the Global Hydrometeorological Panel and the Global Energy and Water Exchanges. So with this, I would invite uh, Professor Terao to uh, enlighten us with his talk. Thank you very much. Yeah, so it is very uh, good opportunity to me to make this talk to you. So thank you very much for giving this chance. Uh, so I'm coming from Kagawa University. It is in the southwestern part of Japan. There is some small island uh, in Japan, and it is a somewhat warmer place in Japan. But uh, sometimes they got some strong rainfall. Sometimes we got a very dry situation. So, so the climate change also affecting us so much. And so I'd like to talk about that some uh, thing about uh, that the low atmospheric high moist static energy mass. It is the lower troposphere that the strong heating is there. 
especially in the such a, a tropical region, a subtropical region, and the monsoon area, especially in summertime or pre-monsoon season. So, uh, and also this air has very big amount of moisture, and moisture itself has very big energy to heat up that the, the uh, atmosphere. So in this sense, we can think about energy included in the air mass uh, by this uh, concept. So high moist, uh, moist static energy. And the, uh, the monsoon onset time in this, in this region, uh, they, they have very big amount of moist, high moist static, static energy air mass, especially, especially in this uh, Asia monsoon region, and especially in this uh, northeastern part of India subcontinent or Bay of Bengal. So I like to talk about this one, and uh, some other topics are also included. And this is our project, Solon, uh, so introduced by Professor Hayashi, and we had many uh, instruments like Distrometer and Distrometer, and many, many people were uh, collaborating, and uh, maybe uh, Professor Shib coming uh, to this uh, seminar through the internet uh, from Nefu. Uh, he also so much uh, uh, collaborated with us and Bangladesh people and uh, some people also collaborating. So we are uh, supported by the people and we can do very big activity in the, you see the Megalaya Plateau and this is Assam region and also Bangladesh. And here is the uh, to, it is, uh, to trim at PRMM uh, rainfall uh, uh, analysis, and we can see a uh, very severe rainfall region in the mega areas, and it is you known as the wettest place in the world. So we are uh, observing this uh, uh, phenomena through very different uh, type of uh, uh, instruments. And uh, uh, recently, we know that uh, some climate pattern some changing. So last year we had some very peculiar pattern of the rainfall, especially in the pre monsoon season, they had very strong rainfall in the uh, south, uh, northeastern part of India subcontinent. But after that, they had some drought situation. And this year also we had some drought situation, northeastern part also some part. And uh, uh, we know that they the Indian region has much more stronger drought situation this year. And last year we had a very heavy uh, flood in the Pakistan region. So in this way, the South Asian region are now getting very big change in the climate. So we are now interested in this, uh, this and so we had some uh, collaborators and we are now uh, uh, developing our activity in this region so much. And uh, this is another uh, I think a newspaper in last year. Some of all this, uh, it is a very common situation. Maybe next year, maybe this type of situation may occur. So this way, uh, we are now interested in that. And uh, sometimes we use a GS map. It is a, a trim, we are using trim and some other uh, 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 microwave satellites. They create very high resolution, uh, 0 0.1 degree in spatially, and also the one hour uh, space, uh, temporal resolution data set created. And these data are very important, especially this region. So not so many language observation is constructed. So this is very important for this region, but uh, accuracy has not so uh, expected. So this is the, our result. So this is the, we have languages. So we have uh, institute observation of the rainfall. And we can compare it with the satellite estimation by the GS map. And this map shows uh, this uh, graph pattern and very much underestimates the real rainfall in this region. This is clearly we can catch. So uh, this period is somewhat better. So we can see some uh, uh, reliability flags of this map and we can see this region, this uh, 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 temporal uh, uh, duration, uh, somewhat better quality can be expected. But uh, it's not perfect. And the uh, other uh, periods, so the result is not so good. Likewise, that the, the institute observation is so important. It shows clearly. And we have language network. So we can compare it with uh, satellite observation like dream. And we uh, uh, installed language from 2004 from Bangladesh region. After that, from 2006. 
ticks, we extend it to the Megalaya and the Asan region, and we continue up to now. Uh, uh, still, we are continuing, and every year we are going to many, many places to make observational results. So, with Sahasan also, we went some uh, half long, we went half long and enjoy some half So, uh, using these data set, it's very important because it, they have uh, clearly uh, the ground truth of the rainfall, and uh, the satellite is not ground truth, and they have the uh, precipitation radar on the tree. In, a satellite, and uh, now uh, they, uh, they are not uh, finished, but now it continued uh, in the GPM as a satellite. But uh, uh, the, the uh, observation, uh, observation is very narrow band, and it passes only once uh, for two days or three days only. So only passing, and after that, two days after that, we come again, and so, <laughs> so that observation very um, rare. So uh, that the accuracy is very difficult to get. So one point we are observing, uh, and so that satellite passes very rare piece. So how we can solve this problem is too many, so many ranges and long of observation. Only that, and we could uh, obtain we obtained more than twenty nine thousand matchups for the trim observ observation and ranges. It is very rare case, and uh, this region, you know, very important place for the rainfall. And so we got that rain gauge data set from these regions, and we have many, many matchups. Uh, all these uh, marks indicate that matchups. Uh, green is no rain. Uh, red is rainfall is there. So green, so many. But we got uh, more than uh, 2,000 matchups of the rainfall data in TRIM. And so we got uh, some comparison between these observations as passing that one satellite uh, just uh, instant, insta instantaneously pass and make one observation. At the same time, we had a rain gauge observation. So we got, we have uh, that the, uh, some analysis method and making some uh, observation oh, window of uh, that uh, the uh, language we counted how many count uh, can be obtained for these some specific five minute period and we got the link for uh, from the these uh, tipping uh, timings and we got this result. So for Megalaya, the Siret and Barak regions uh, in the northeastern part of, in the, uh, of Bangladesh, uh, there is clearly there is a very big underestimation of the rainfall. And for the Megalaya Plateau, we had an uh, underestimation much more than 50%. It indicates most only the 50% of rain can be obtained from the uh, satellite observation. Half. It is estimated half of that. And the Silet Barak region has almost two, uh, uh, two thirds. So this type of very big uh, underestimation can be found because of this direct observation, in-situ ob -situ observation. So in-situ -situ observation so important. And from that, we can catch that in, prem in monsoon season, we had a big uh, underestimation in the, especially in very highly rainfall regions in the northeastern part of the subcontinent, especially in Megalaya and the Silet region. So that they, we should uh, improve that the uh, method for estimating the rainfall from the precipitation laser in the tree observation, especially uh, we are now continuing in the GPM, it also has to be uh, improved. So it shows uh, this data shows like this, and this is the main topic. <laughs> uh, so we are yes, now sir. very interested in. The lower tropospheric high moist static energy air mass, it is uh, like this, the red color. So it is the energy uh, included in the air mass is evaluated by this amount, moist static energy. And this is a, a sum of enthalpy and potential energy and latent heat of water vapor. All of these is included. And we can get this uh, amount of energy in the sum amount of air mass. And this air mass is uh, accumulated in the low troposphere, and it creates a very strong uh, convection. And it, it is in this convection that uh, the 
the latent heat is released and it is transferred to the, the another uh, part, entropy, and it becomes a high uh, dry static energy EMS in the upper troposphere. So here is very highly heated EMS, as you see by this red color, and these are very strong, very uh, so much amount of uh, uh, heated EMS created a very big uh, uh, north south uh, gradient reversal in the Asia Monsoon region. So this heating process very much uh, 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 important for. Uh, analysis and understanding of Asian monsoon system. And here is uh, uh, one map. And so it is a, a temperature in the upper troposphere. And as uh, 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 Goswami Sensei told us, and this is very strong heating out there. So it is a written here, it is a, a Q1, Q2 analysis is done. So we can see that so strong. Uh, heating is there around that uh, Tibetan plateau region, something south of that. And because of the strong heating, we can see that very strong uh, temperature gradient in the troposphere. And we make very, very big uh, heating reversal is the key and the essence of uh, monsoon circulation. So how this reversal is created is essential to understanding the monsoon. And uh, 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 Goswami Sensei told about a very uh, this region for this uh, uh, northeastern part of Indian subcontinent region. Uh, so that the temperature gradient is created somewhat earlier than that this very big uh, scale temperature gradient. And uh, I agree that it is a kind of monsoon establishment. So in this sense, it is very uh, fascinated by your uh, presentation. And so it is very important how it is uh, heated up. And for this, uh, and, of thought, uh, uh, and also uh, so it is gonna, and the, it is because of the that highly uh, heated air mass is come from the lower troposphere in reality. So there is very strong convection and through this convection that uh, very much amount of uh, highly uh, energy, high energy air mass is coming from the lower troposphere and injected to the upper troposphere. And it is uh, accumulated after the monsoon onset, and it makes a very highly heated air in the upper troposphere. And uh, so, because of that, uh, that uh, the very uh, high temperature mass is accumulated. And at the same time, uh, because of the Earth's rotation, uh, this highly uh, heated air mass cannot be escaped from this uh, Tibetan uh, high region. And this is a, a circulational flow, rotational flow. It is a divergent flow. The rotational flow is much more stronger than divergent flow like this. It is a, a kind of uh, effect of earth rotation. What we call a geostrophic adjustment, it occurs. So these are highly heated air mass cannot be escaped easily from this region, and it is accumulated to make very big amount of uh, high temperature air mass in the Batorbosphere. This is my idea. And so uh, we are now, uh, I'm now thinking about how uh, this accumulation occur. For that, we need a very highly uh, heated air mass in the lower troposphere. This is heated, but it is by that moisture, it is heated. So big amount of moisture has a very big amount of energy to transfer to some real heat, heating uh, after that creation of clouds. So these are highly uh, heated and moistened lower troposphic uh, air mass, very important. It is my idea. And so I'm now uh, analyzing how much amount of uh, high moisture static energy air mass is uh, accumulated in the lower troposphere in the northeastern part of the Indian subcontinent and other regions also. And some uh, uh, analysis by Busan Khan uh, uh, told that uh, so high uh, uh, moisture static energy air mass can be found, especially in this region. It is clearly shown, but they not they do not analyze about amount of that the highly heated air mass. But we are now interested in highly amount itself. The fat amount of the air mass created, how much amount is injected. Atmosphere is my uh, 
big uh, topic. And so it is the amount of the highly moist, high moist static energy uh, in the, in the, the boreal summer and boreal winter, January and July. And we can see only in this region and only in summer, boreal summer region, this is very highly uh, moist and uh, high, uh, high temperature air mass is created. And in the other region and also in winter season, not, not such, such a region can be found. So this is very unique uh, to this uh, northeastern part or northern part to India, and it is very important factor for the monsoon uh, onset and monsoon maintenance. This is my idea. So it is the uh, to time series of that. And uh, uh, so we are analyzing how these uh, uh, amount is uh, increase and how it is growing uh, in the, this region. And we can see that in May already, uh, so highly uh, heated air mass is uh, accumulated in the northeastern part of the subcontinent, and it further going up, and so making some uh, divergence of high dry static energy mass. So highly heated air is accumulated in this time in the lower troposphere. It goes up and it is diverged uh, in the upper troposphere. You can see this divergence very clearly. And this is the uh, divergence in the all these region and the breweries are Bay of Bengal and the northern part, uh, northeastern part in the subcontinent also included. So this uh, region is very uh, important for the monsoon on central time, uh, how it is created in the upper atmosphere. So uh, this uh, three timings there, so we can have, we, will, we may have some uh, intra-season variability. So I, it is uh, can be that the, some process uh, already explained by Goswami. So interest is variability or some uh, know, like, uh, transient waves, something. So we may uh, uh, analysis how these three waves is created. It may be very important, but not yet done. But anyway, I am still, uh, I'm already uh, show this. Uh, we may have, uh, we may be, <laughs> With another one, published very soon. And so it is very important thing. So Bay of Bengal and also Northeastern part of the subcontinent controlling the monsoon onset. This is my idea. So we can see uh, the high accumulation of that the divergence in the uh, high moisture static energy, high dry, uh, dry static energy can be found like this analysis. And, but to the, uh, this high moisture static energy air mass uh, can be uh, observed by that uh, the uh, to, uh, radio zone also. It has to be um, uh, to observed by uh, that the radio zone also. But to the result of the radio zone is this one and this uh, bar. And the result of that our uh, analysis using the uh, uh, to models is like this, different. And especially for the Guwahati city, the Assam region, this is highly underestimated in the models. But the, of, on the other hand, in the Bangladesh region, it is highly uh, overestimated maybe in Bangladesh. So that the, the, that the model cannot be a, a reproduced, the real process of that the, the high uh, production of high, highly uh, heated air mass in the lower troposphere. So it is my Finding so because of that we have to uh, observe that institute observation very important. So we are now thinking about one project, and it's a highly moist static in the mass in the low we are low, low atmosphere. It has high big moisture, so we can catch that moisture using the GPS receiver. Uh, using that we can see that the uh, accumulated uh, precipitable water using some delay of that signal and also we can we uh, installing the one aws nearby uh maybe from here maybe 100 to 200 meters so please go there three days later and we are installing so 
And it is a,、uh, it has some observation of the, uh, uh, なんだっけ、えっと、temperature and、uh, humidity and rainfall and wind also included. Using them, we may estimate how sensible heating and low and latent heating can be,、uh, transferred to the air.、Uh, it is one thing. And also, we are installing that the Two、uh, radiometers. It is one is a、uh, uh, solar radiation, another one the latent, uh, sorry, uh, long wave radiation. And、uh, that these are uh, 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 light and uh, uh, long wave radiation is、uh, heating up the ground. It is、uh, driving that the change of soil moisture and the heating process in the ground level. And this has to be very important for the understanding of、uh, upper, upward uh, uh, flux of the heat and moisture. And also, we, are,、uh, we have a plan for the,、uh, making the extra layering zone observation in the troposphere and、uh, four times daily.、Uh, this process is so much changing. So, diagonal variation is very high. And so, we should、uh, make observation four times daily at our、uh, minimum. But、uh, we have only two times usually. So, we、uh, will increase in number. So, we put three points. One is Guwahati. So, please see is that、uh, instrument. And this is that the, uh, uh, photo. It is the、uh, Professor Hayashi already told about this. And this is the radiometers and some data loggers inside. So maybe you can、uh, download data、uh, connecting with the laptop. So you can make analysis using that. I'm expecting you, your、uh, uh, uh, joining project. Well, maybe time is too, too long. So I will finish this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.、Uh, we would like to again take a few questions if there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that might have to do with something to do with the,、mm. the, the photographic presentation. Ah,、uh, possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mega layer. Explain、mm. and this part and this all the models. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, I can agree that the, that the, that the model problem it is, the, I, I'm using that e r a file this time. So it is、uh, the analysis, but it, they use so much uh, modeling uh, technology inside that one. So that the deficiency in the model may be reflected to this result. So,、uh, Maybe, yeah. So, this、uh, problem in the resolution of that topography may also be one problem with, because of that. <laughs> one point, one point. One location, yeah. One location, one grid. So, we compare, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. うん。
Yeah, maybe we keep look at that the uh, rainfall uh, reproduced by this era five may also be good information about the estimating how, why, why this problem occur. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Okay, then. Uh, thank you so, so much, sir, for your insightful lecture. Uh, so quickly, I would like to, to uh, uh, ask the participants who have joined online to mute their uh, mics so that we don't have any dis uh, disturbances in between. So uh, moving ahead, I will uh, now take this opportunity to welcome our fifth speaker for today's workshop, Dr. Yusuke Yamane from the Tokoha University in Japan. Uh, Dr. Yamane is a distinguished member of the Faculty of Education Education at Tokoha University, where his research is primarily focused on the realms of atmospheric and hydrospheric sciences with a specific emphasis on uh, weather disasters and mesoscale meteorology. His expertise in natural sciences drives his commitment to understanding and mitigating the impacts of weather-related disasters, particularly at the mesoscale level. Beyond his academic pursuits, he plays an active role in shaping the scientific landscape. He serves as a vital asset to the Earth Science Education Editorial Board for the Japan Society of Earth Science Education, contributing to the dissemination of knowledge in this field. Additionally, his involvement as a member of the Suzuka Science Museum designated man uh, manager review committee projects his dedication to advancing science education and public engagement. Through his multifaceted contributions, Dr. Yamane exemplifies a well-rounded commitment to scientific research, education, and community involvement. So I uh, welcome Dr. Yamane to enlighten us on the topic of uh, severe local storm synoptic environments in the northeastern part of the Indian subcontinent. Thank you so much. Sir. Uh, everyone, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, maybe so uh, you are so tired uh, because so it takes so much time to. Yes, I'm so tired, also tired. So and, uh, uh, the day before yesterday, so uh, uh, I arrived at uh, Guwahati. At that time, so I was very surprised at a very hot situation. Yes, in Japan also uh, very hot, but so, uh, here is also uh, very hot, very hot. So I was surprised. Yes, uh, yesterday so uh, I went to uh, Kota market, you know, Kota market. Yes, but so uh, uh, I was lost on the way to uh, Kota market from a guest house before this meeting. I was so tired. <laughs> very sweaty. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and thank you very much for giving me this, uh, and, uh, this kind of a good opportunity. So, uh, my name is Yusuke Yamane. Uh, I'm an associate, uh, associate professor uh, in Tokoha University. So, uh, my university is uh, located in a local area in Japan. So, my university is a very small private university. Yes, I got a PhD uh, in Kyoto University under the Professor Hayashi. So he is uh, my supervisor. Yes, my boss. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Today, so my talk, uh, my uh, the title of my talking is a severe local storm and synoptic environment in the northeastern part of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, I'm interested in a severe local storm such as a tornado and. Uh, hail and uh, lightning uh, in northeastern part, uh, including uh, Bangladesh. Yeah, also a summer also. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, this is uh, the distribution of a tornado over the world, so made by Fujita. Yeah, Fujita is Japanese. 
uh, professor. So um, the, the, the Professor Fujita is the most famous researcher uh, in the uh, so regarding to uh, tornado research. Yes. And uh, uh, you can see, uh, yes, yeah, it is well known that uh, uh, like this uh, tornado is uh, frequently occur uh, in the United States of America, like this, yeah, it is very, very known. And so you can see that the tornado also frequently occur uh, in and around Bangladesh also like this. Yes, it is well known also that uh, the tornado uh, concentrate over the northeastern part of Indian subcontinent, including Bangladesh and the South Assam also like this. Yes. And uh, this is also the distribution of of a tornado in the Indian subcontinent. Le left figure the distribution of a tornado over the northeastern part, uh, sorry, so uh, the, uh, in the Indian subcontinent. So you can see that the tornado uh, concentrate uh, in and around the Bangladesh like this. Uh, T indicates tornado. And the right figure shows a uh, monthly frequency of a tornado. Uh, yes, so you can see that. Uh, Tornado concentrates during the pre monsoon season from March to May, like this, uh, with the peaking of April, like this. Yes. So, uh, tornadoes frequently occur in and around Bangladesh during the March to May. It's called the pre monsoon season and peaking in April, like this. Uh, uh, in rainy season, monsoon season, uh, in June to September, so tornado is uh, drastically decreasing like this. Yes. Uh, after the monsoon season, post monsoon season, uh, a little so increasing of tornado. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, when I, I was a master course student, uh, I started so, this topic research, yes, uh, regarding to uh, severe local storms such as tornado in around Bangladesh. Yes, at some time, so uh, I had uh, so one interesting question like this: Why severe thunderstorms frequently occur in and around Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season? This is the my my motivation uh, of our research activity uh, in this region. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, it is well known that uh, uh, that uh, uh, summer instability and the vertical wind shear are favorable uh, environmental conditions for severe thunderstorm. Yes. Uh, severe thunderstorm are generated in the so favorable conditions, so favorable meteorological condition. Okay. Uh, summer instability and the vertical industry is a very important factor for generation of a severe thunderstorm. Yes. Uh, at first, I will explain about the thermal instability. Summer instability is increasing in the environment with large lapse rate of temperature between the lower and the middle layer. Yes, lapse rate. La, uh, lapse rate means the difference of the temperature between the lower layer and the upper layer. For example, so in the lower layer, so warm air, and uh, upper layer, so cold air. So you can understand that. So, so uh, difference of the temperature is very large. Okay. So in this situation, so the uh, summer instability is increasing, and. Uh, so in the lower layer, so large amount of water vapor, so make also so making uh, uh, in summer instability is increasing. So that's why so uh, summer instability is increasing. So uh, uh, in the environment uh, with a large lapse rate of temperature between the lower layer and the upper layer, and so in the lower layer, so large amount of water vapor like this, and so vertical wind shear. Uh, vertical wind shear is that, that so large magnitude of a vertical wind shear contributes to formation of organized convection such as supercell and muscle. Yes, a vertical wind shear means the difference of a, a wind 
wind vector difference are lower layer and upper layer. For example, so in lower layer, so southern, south, south wind, upper layer, so westerly wind. So in this situation, so, uh, so wind direction and wind speed is a uh, different the, between the uh, between a lower layer and the upper layer. So in this situation, so vertical wind shear is so large. Okay. And so large magnitude of vertical wind shear uh, so makes a uh, 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 very favorable condition for the outbreak of uh, uh, organized convection, such as a supercell and marcel. Yes, uh, supercell and marcel is a very so special type of a cumulonimbus cloud. So yes, so this type of uh, uh, convective cloud is very dangerous. Sometimes as a supercell and marcel so makes a, a tornado also a very gusty wind also very so grapefruits like so very big very big so hail also so that's why so this type of uh, convection is a uh, very so dangerous uh, this type of uh, convection uh, such as supercell and marcel so sometimes uh, makes uh, a severe tornado okay and so supercell and multi-cell are uh, often uh, produce uh, severe weather on the surface, the yeah, tornadoes, big hair also, lightning also, yes. So in general, the atmospheric environment with large summer instability and vertical wind shear is uh, favorable for severe thunderstorm. This is a uh, so favorable condition for the generation of severe thunderstorm. Large summer instability, large vertical wind issue. It is a very important factor for the generation of a severe thunderstorm, okay? Uh, this is a, a seasonal variation of Cape and vertical wind shear in Bangladesh. Yes, and the Cape convective available potential energy is a measure index to evaluate thermal instability. Yes, this is a very, very famous index uh, to evaluate uh, thermal instability. CAPE is, uh, CAPE is uh, used to evaluate uh, as an uh, index. And so on the ma in this analysis is the magnitude of the difference of wind vector uh, between 10 uh, above ground level metals, very so near surface very near surface, and so 500 hectopascal level, so 500, he, 500 hectopascal level is equivalent to about uh, so 5,050 five um, meter above ground level. So middle rate, yeah, or middle, middle rate yeah, is defined as a measure of a particle in the shear, yes. Uh, this figure, this figure, uh, shows a uh, uh, scatter plot of a cape and a vertical wind shear uh, from January to December in Bangladesh. Uh, yes, uh, for example, so this figure, so uh, vertical so axis indicate a vertical wind shear. So horizontal axis indicates a cape in January in uh, 90 degree east, uh, 22.5 degree north, uh, uh, in central of the Bangladesh. Yes, like this. Yeah, you can see that uh, so March, April, May, so Cape and vertical shear, so both uh, so the larger. Thanks. So data point, uh, uh, black point, uh, concentrate in, uh, so, uh, uh, in this figure, like this. And the May also, so Cape and the uh, so vertical shear in uh, are larger. Uh, but so June, July, August, uh, you can see that the uh, wind shear also uh, is a very small, like this. Okay. So, uh, these results indicate that the uh, uh, environmental condition in Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season from March to May, yes, uh, is a favorable for severe standards. Cape is large and the vertical wind shear is large. But so, monsoon season, Cape and the vertical wind shear both is a small. 
So that's why so uh, environmental condition in monsoon season is uh, not favorable for the outbreak of a severe thunderstorm because the cape is uh, small, and uh, but current this year is also uh, small like this. Okay. Okay. Uh, this 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 figure shows a seasonal and spatial variation of Cape and vertical wind shear across the Indian subcontinent. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, this figure shows a, a ratio of uh, uh, Cape and vertical. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, distribution of a monthly frequency with Cape. Uh, uh, greater than or equal to 2,000 joule per kilogram, and the sea wind shear, wind back vertical wind shear, uh, greater than or equal to 10 meter, uh, uh, 10 yes, 10 meter second, yes, 10 meter per second, yes, yes, yes. So red color, brown color, and orange color indicates uh, so high frequency with the high cape and the high vertical wind shear. Yes. So you can see uh, that so uh, in April, uh, especially so uh, high frequency uh, with high cape, high la environmental shear in underland Bangladesh like this. Okay. Yes. And. Uh, Yes, so Cape and vertical wind shear are higher in around Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season with peaking in April, like this. And uh, in monsoon season, June, July, August, September, uh, so Cape and shear, both Cape and shear are low. Yes, like this. So this result indicates that the environmental condition in underland Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season, especially April, is a favorable for severe thunderstorm. Okay. Yes. So this research activity it was conducted uh, is um, uh, my doctor course uh, when when I. In, when I, I when I was a master doctor course student, so uh, this research was conducted. So this result of one of the my sort of PhD thesis. Yes. After that, I have a, another question. Yes. Uh, why Cape and the vertical wind shear are larger in and around Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season? Yes, to price. Uh, yes, so this is uh, the purpose of the present study. Yes. Yes, again, so to understand, so why Cape and the vertical wind shear are larger in underland Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season. This is the uh, uh, purpose of the present study. And to clarify future synoptic meteorological steps with producing higher cape and vertical wind shear in and around Bangladesh during the pre monsoon season. In this study, so we use the JRA 55, Japan Re Analysis for 55 years data. Uh, this kind of data set are used in this study for 1958 to 2000, uh, sorry, mistakes 60, 2060 with horizontal resolution of 1.25 degree. Uh, this figure shows a distribution of the specific humidity, wind, and the potential height as a level of uh, 950 hectopascal. Uh, 950 hectopascal uh, means uh, uh, near the surface. Yes, yes, you can see uh, that uh, uh, Oh, sorry. Sure. Sure. Uh, this is a February. This is a April. This is a August. This is a October. Yes, uh, you can see in April. Uh, uh, so in underland Bangladesh, uh, also uh, along the so Indian Peninsula, 
uh, eastern coast of Indian Peninsula. So you can see that uh, so southerly north, south northwesterly uh, is a prominent up to uh, Bangladesh like this. Yes, and so uh, uh, you can see the orange color. Orange color uh, indicates that uh, so higher so specific humidity. So water vapor contents. Yes, so. So anyway, so you can see that in April, so uh, in and around the Bangladesh, uh, so wet southwesterly wind is prominent over the Bangladesh, like this. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yes, uh, this is the distribution of the temperature and the wind and the geopotential height at the level of 800 hectopascal. 800 hectopascal is equivalent to about a two or three kilometer above ground level. Yes, yes. And in April, in April, uh, you can see that so warm westerly flow uh, so, uh, is a prominent over the so Bangladesh like this. Yes. Okay. And so this figure, the distribution of the temperature and the wind and the geopotential height at the level of 500 hectopascal, the middle level, like this. So you can see that in April, yes, uh, you can see so very so west, uh, so, uh, so uh, westerly uh, jet uh, is uh, so uh, uh, prominent over the Bangladesh, like this. This is a subtropical jet. In this season, subtropical.
So uh, I would ask if the online participants can hear us now, if uh, somebody can quickly uh, respond to the chats. OK, they can hear us. So uh, we uh, move on to our next uh, deliberations. Uh, so the next two uh, distinct speakers uh, for uh, today's event will join us online. Uh, uh, first is uh, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Praveen Kumar Thakur, who is the head and scientist SG from Water Resources Department, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing under Indian Space Research Organization in Dehradun, India. He is a, a distinguished scientist renowned for his profound expertise in snow glacier studies, precipitation, flood, groundwater hydrology, hydrological modeling, and planetary remote sensing. With a career characterized by excellence, Dr. Thakur stands as a forefront of bridging theoretical knowledge with tangible solutions. His dedication to sharing amassed wisdom and experiences has significantly impacted the field, particularly with the context of India. Dr. Thakur's contribution extends beyond immediate circumstances, encompassing the broader complexities of climate-induced challenges across multiple Indian river basins. His work embodies a holistic and visionary approach, exemplifying his commitment to a sustainable and forward-thinking perspective that resonates with the intricacies of our dynamic environment. He has been a part of various projects sponsored by international space agencies such as ESA, DLR, JAXA, and has conducted many field surveys in Indian river basins and scientific expeditions in Indian Himalayan glaciers. Also, uh, Indian scientific expedition to Antarctica and Arctic, uh, I mean, in both the poles. 
He is also a science team member of the NASA ISRO SAR uh, program, that is the NISAR program, and has also contributed as an expert member of the National Disaster Management. And to invite Dr. Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. To be uh, one of the experts uh, in this very interesting talk and relevant uh, workshop uh, on the changing precipitation flood uh, couple cycle in Northeast region. So my topic of today's uh, talk would be the uh, spatio-temporal variability of rainfall and associated floods in parts of Northeast region as observed from satellite data and the modeling techniques. So the outline of my presentation would be first I will uh, cover the how from the observed data either from the rain gauges or from the satellite based observations how uh, we can uh, see the variability uh, uh, of the precipitation and uh, what are the impacts on the reoccurring flood situation in northeast region and as you know in last 30 years we have a uh, uh, huge amount of data sets uh, both from optical and radar sensors which have given us very good information about the location where the floods are occurring and then uh, uh, using those uh, time series maps to generate the flood hazard maps and in northeast region not just the extreme rainfall uh, but uh, some other geomorphological and geological factors also play into uh, uh, the flood situation, uh, which are uh, namely the glacial lake outburst floods. And uh, there are the uh, number of landslides historical as well as the in the monsoon season also, which uh, uh, stops the water flow of the river and then it breaches, uh, causing the floods in the downstream area. So those kind of things sometimes because of the short time uh, round, uh, turnaround and time of concentration, uh, our satellites may not be able to capture those floods. So for that, uh, we make use of the inundation models. And finally, what are the future uh, new uh, generation of satellites uh, which will be used to measure the rainfall and also map uh, flood uh, and river flow more accurately. So if we see the observational data from our uh, Indian Meteorological Department, so we can see here uh, the Northeast, it is uh, characterized as with the entire Indian landmass, the uh, majority of the rainfall uh, which will occur, that will occur in the monsoon, but there is a distinct uh, uh, difference between the our uh, Southeast uh, monsoon, uh, what occurs in the Indian region and what we see in the Northeast region. So you can see here April, and May month where uh, monsoon is just uh, starting in the May month in the Kerala, but in the April month, in this area, Northeast region is already under the rainfall. So there is a uh, significantly much higher rainfall in April, May month in Northeast India, that is the pre-monsoon showers as compared. Uh, then uh, the uh, highest rainfall is uh, in uh, July month, uh, followed by uh, June and uh, August based on the statistics of uh, IMD rain gauge data sets. And if we uh, see the overall trend from 1950 to 2006, so on annual basis, there is no significant uh, trend increase or decrease. But on a seasonal scale, if we see, there is a decrease in the monsoon uh, rainfall. And also there is a increase in the post monsoon uh, rainfall over the uh, Northeast region as per the observational data sets. Now, if we see the satellite-based observation, one of the high-resolution satellite-based observation which uses the multiple uh, uh, satellite observation in the infrared domain and also in uh, some in the microwave, so that is the CHIPS uh, data sets, and they also combine some ground-based observation. So uh, that uh, data set, it is uh, very uh, accurately able to uh, uh, depict the spatial variation. But uh, the high rainfall value, for example, this is 2019, and even if we plot the long-term rainfall uh, from this uh, data sets, uh, there is an underestimation. And same way uh, we have seen in the other satellite data products also, like the uh, GS map or uh, IMUG of uh, GPM, so there is an underestimation. So we, uh, in the satellite-based observation, we are not able to capture this highest rainfall of what we see in the Cherapunji region, the 11,000. So there is some estimation, especially in the Meghalaya region. Otherwise, uh, spatially variation on the month basis, uh, 
uh, and on the seasonal basis, the spatial variations are well, uh, well uh, captured. Then uh, uh, there has been uh, talk by uh, Professor Goswami uh, and Professor Datta also uh, that uh, the May and April rainfall is very unique for Northeast region. And uh, our director, Dr. Harpreet Singh, and his team at uh, SAC is through. Uh, they have used this uh, uh, AIRS uh, data sets uh, uh, in the uh, TES sensor, one of the sensor TES, which measures the uh, isotopic signatures of the atmosphere. And uh, using those signatures, uh, they have distinctly shown that this uh, pre-monsoon time period, you can see the enhanced vegetation index from the Modi sensor. This is the March time period. This is the May time period. So in the April-May time period, there is a large amount of evapotranspiration taking place. And within this evapotranspiration, the relative component of the transpiration is uh, much higher as compared to the terrestrial uh, this evaporation. So this uh, leads to increase in this uh, isotopic uh, signature. Uh, and this, uh, they have uh, partitioned the uh, isotopic signature, which is coming from the uh, water vapor from the Bay of Bengal. And uh, they have distinctly found that uh, this signature is coming from the evapotranspiration, which is mainly the transpiration occurring during the April-May month, uh, which uh, causes increase in the water vapor. And then uh, subsequently, the uh, pre-monsoon uh, rainfall, which is higher in April and May month in uh, North East India as compared to the other parts. And later on, uh, the monsoon uh, will uh, take place. So this is the distinct observation which has been derived from the uh, atmospheric isotope using the satellite observations. Then uh, in the monsoon season uh, in the Northeast India, as uh, we have uh, seen from the satellite observations, we have the uh, cloud-free optical data, plus we have the radar data starting from ERS-1, ERS-2, then radar set, then our reset, and recently this US-4. So those data sets, if you combine together, and uh, you can get the idea about the flood uh, uh, areas where uh, there is a, a inundation of the uh, water. And these are the statistics from the Central Water Commission, the 40 million hectare area of the India, which is uh, under uh, flood prone. And as per the latest report, 15.75 uh, billion hectare uh, uh, spread over 435 is uh, in the entire country. And in the Brahmaputra Basin, uh, which is the major river basin draining the water from the northeast India. Uh, it is the most uh, second uh, after Bihar. This is the second highest uh, region uh, where we have the recurrent uh, floods. Now coming back to the uh, this observation. So uh, cloud free data, uh, if we find it uh, during the flood time, okay. But if it is the persistence cloud cover, then we go for the radar data. And uh, this radar data, because uh, it is having the uh, higher wavelength as compared to hydrometeors, so it will penetrate through the clouds. And the water being a smooth uh, surface uh, relative to other uh, land cover features, it will have the specular reflection uh, resulting in uh, easy identification of the inundation area. So using this approach, uh, our uh, ISRO, uh, where uh, the operational uh, flood mapping is done at our Hyderabad Center, National Remote Sensing Center under the Disaster Support uh, Program of ISRO. So they have mapped this. Uh, this is the cloud free data of uh, a uh, WIFS data, and this is the flood time image of the Brahmaputra River. So cloud free data wherever it is possible. Otherwise, majority of the data will be the uh, radar data. Uh, and then this radar data has been used from the 1988 to 2002 to know what are the areas uh, which are uh, prone for the flooding and also uh, what are the areas if you uh, add all those layers uh, what are the areas which are getting more frequently flooded as compared to the other ones for example this Marigao uh, Lakhimpur and these uh, particular uh, districts, uh, they are much more frequently flooded as compared to the other districts. Uh, these are the top eight uh, districts uh, of the Assam and total 2.46 million hectares of the uh, Assam state uh, that is uh, under uh, uh, flood one time or another time during the last uh, 30 years. And uh, this uh, entire data sets uh, are uh, available uh, in the 
NDM uh, site of uh, ISRO. You can go as a uh, web GIS tool also. And if you want uh, direct shape file, you can also request. And also uh, ISRO, uh, this Department of Space, North East Space Application Center. So they also do the active mapping and uh, bridging of embankments is one of the regular phenomena in uh, case of the heavy floods, in, especially in Assam. So that has also been monitored, which results in the flooding in uh, these areas. So these are the some of the uh, areas uh, where the uh, this in the NDM uh, these maps are available. Now uh, apart from the uh, radar data, uh, there is a, a new technique, uh, not new but uh, used uh, more uh, popular uh, frequently nowadays uh, as compared to the maybe 10 years ago. It is the radar altimeter data. So this is one example uh, for the Kajiranga Park where our Saral Altica, which is the KA band altimeter data, it was used to map the uh, changes in the uh, water level in the Brahmaputra River for the 2016 season. And the uh, water level of uh, 6.73 uh, uh, increase uh, was observed from this uh, altimeter uh, data sets. And if you see the uh, total uh, uh, altimeter uh, data sets uh, which are visible uh, from the satellite data uh, uh, that becomes uh, 169 virtual gauges which are visible uh, by combining uh, JSON 1, JSON 2, Saral Altica, Sentinel 3A, Sentinel 3B. So there are a number of satellites and our uh, we have also developed a system to automatically uh, get the water levels and our uh, SAC ISRO uh, under the VEDAS portal they also provide this uh, uh, water level uh, at multiple uh, time periods. Only limitation is the temporal interval uh, which can be uh, improved by incorporating more number of sensors or getting more number of satellites uh, uh, in the space so that you get almost a daily level of uh, scale for the water level monitoring and uh, some of the popular sites uh, uh, where you can get this data is the Dahiti and the hydro web where uh, a global uh, data sets uh, either for the river or for the reservoirs uh, based on the satellite altimeters it is available. And then uh, apart from the precipitation as I told northeast region is also uh, uh, have this kind of geomorphological hazards especially the glacial lake hazards. So this is one example of the Bhutan where due to the changing climate, uh, the lakes has formed and if they are in the end of glacier, pro-glacial lakes, they are um, uh, susceptible for the glacial lake uh, outburst. And this is for the Sikkim area. Uh, these are the some of the lakes uh, which are susceptible for the breach. And some of these lakes are in cascades, one and after the another. So they can breach due to the avalanche, uh, they can uh, rock avalanche or the snow avalanche or due to some seismic event or due to some high precipitation event uh, which will uh, fill up this uh, lake very rapidly and due to the hydrostatic pressure they will be breach and then uh, this cascading effect can have devastating uh, impact in the downstream areas. And uh, researchers have also predicted this is for the Sikkim again. Uh, in the future, if the same trend of temperature continues, uh, what will be the areas uh, where there will be uh, expansion of these glacial lakes? So these hazards, uh, if we continue with the same climate trends, uh, these lakes are going to expand and uh, more bigger volume and the bigger breaches are going to happen in the future. So to, uh, to get this idea uh, about uh, what are the possible areas where these floods can happen, and this is uh, one example of hydrodynamic model of the uh, lake uh, in Bhutan, where the, uh, a few uh, kilometers downstream there is a airstrip and one of the scenarios, this particular area comes under the flood uh, inundation. And uh, apart from the glaciers, uh, there are some uh, big debris flow event. Uh, this particular event happened in uh, 2018 in uh, Yarlong Zangpo and this happened after the monsoon. Uh, when monsoon was uh, over, uh, there was a big uh, debris flow event uh, coming from this uh, particular uh, mountainous region, which is part of a, a big uh, glacier near the Great Bend area. And it uh, uh, obstructed the water flow of uh, Brahmaputra for two, three days uh, in uh, 18th, 19th uh, September. And this is from the radar data. You can see the debris uh, inundation here. And then the upstream areas, how this uh, uh, inundation are shown. And uh, this is the uh, uh, bridge site, which also got uh, uh, inundated in some portion. And after a few days, uh, uh, this uh, landslide automatically breached. 
and uh, the flood water wave came uh, in the downstream area because this is a very steep area and uh, even the radar uh, will fail to uh, cover this entire uh, stretch so to get how much area of the volume is there we can uh, combine digital elevation model and gis to get the area elevation capacity curve by knowing the approximate uh, geometry of the dam and uh, plus uh, we combine in this with the hydrodynamic simulation uh, models uh, and this is at Pasighat uh, 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 discharge. So at Pasighat more than 15,000 uh, uh, meter cube per second discharge was observed in the uh, late October uh, during that particular bridge time and uh, what we simulated from the hydrodynamic model uh, matches uh, very well with the actual water level observed at the CWC. And this is the inundation scenario because this is a deep gorge, so it will not have much uh, horizontal expansion. Uh, but the vertical water level rise will be higher. So at Pasigar, it was almost uh, 16 meter of uh, water level uh, increase in height. Now, uh, at the end, uh, this all data sets, uh, for example, uh, the uh, digital elevation model, the subbasin derived from it, the land use land cover from the satellites, uh, and then we can use it to derive the runoff. And uh, we can generate the uh, from the uh, satellite derived or the uh, ground based observed rainfall data. We can also do the rainfall runoff modeling to get what are the basins which are more prone for flooding as compared to the other basins. So here we can see the Tibetan portion, it is almost uh, less runoff because of the less rainfall, whereas this Arunachal portion and some portion uh, near the Meghalaya uh, border with Assam, they are uh, uh, very high uh, runoff generation uh, sub basins. And by combining both these uh, hydrological models, the rainfall forecast, and uh, constraining these hydrodynamic models with the altimeter data and the SAR data, we can improve the prediction of the inundation in this uh, complex uh, river basins. And in addition to the uh, observation uh, from the rain gauges or the satellite derived uh, rainfall data, so as, as of now, we have the three Doppler weather radars. Uh, which are working and uh, if we can integrate this Doppler weather radar uh, along with the uh, weather forecast models uh, which is run operationally by the Northeast Space Application Center Shillong uh, and uh, by combining these two models we can improve our rainfall uh, observation and the forecast and that will lead to improvement in the uh, forecast of the uh, floods in this particular area. And at the last, uh, I would like to uh, uh, inform you that the SWOT mission, which was launched uh, in 2022 December, in uh, October onwards, this uh, data will be available. And this will be the first one which will give you the river discharge from the space. And in uh, January 2024, our NASA ISRO SAR data will also be available. It will be available free of uh, cost to all the researchers, where uh, you can get every 12 days the uh, L band and S band data. And for the rainfall, uh, there is a, a very unique mission uh, known as the Tropics, which is the time resolved observation of precipitation structure and storm intensity using the three set of the CubeSats, which are having more than 12 channels in the uh, passive microwave. So that will be uh, adding to the existing network of the rainfall measuring satellites, which will improve our accuracy, especially in these uh, complex topography and vegetation control uh, environments. So, uh, thank you. Hello. 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 Are we audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, audible. Hello. Okay. So we will ask uh, the participants if they have a few questions quickly for um, Thakur sir. Uh, Dr. Thakur is safe. Uh, really a nice presentation covering a lot of uh, things from atmospherics to altimeter. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So my point is that what will be the accuracy of altimeter in the hilly part where the width is very less and we have a, a, a gorge type of uh, river systems? Yes, sir. So in the hilly area, sir, uh, if the width uh, it is not if it is not constrained by the steep mountains, for example, yes. this particular uh, area. So here also we have one adjacent track. 
so yes. uh, if it is not constrained and if i am getting at least two two uh, three footprints on the water body which is uh, 100 meter or 200 meter accuracy is similar what we get in the plain area of the assam that is within uh, uh, 10 to 40 centimeters okay okay good in, in the in the upstream area sir uh, where i have shown this uh, animation uh, in the uh, like this one so in the Tibetan yes. region, altimeter accuracy is as good as Assam, only in the mountainous region where it is turning 90 degree. At that yes. portion, uh, uh, width has to be bare minimum of maybe 100 to 200 meters. Uh, then only it is possible. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so now uh, we move forward to our last talk uh, for today's uh, session. And I would invite uh, Dr. Basudev Biswal, uh, sir, Associate Professor from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. And Dr. Biswal is an accomplished scholar in the field of hydrology with an impressive academic journey that spans across continents. Graduating with a PhD from the prestigious University of Padova, Italy in 2011, he has laid the foundation for his research career. Postdoctoral, his passion for knowledge dissemination led him to briefly teach at uh, KIIT University before embarking on an impactful research journey at the IISC Bangalore. Presently, as an esteemed associate professor, professor at the IIT Bombay, uh, Dr. Biswal remains committed to advancing hydrological predictions, global hydrology, and unveiling the complexities of transport in rivers. His valuable tenure at IIT Hyderabad also, from to 2013 to 2017, further solidifies his expertise and contribution to the realm of hydrology, leaving an indelible mark on the field. So with this, I would invite Professor Biswal, sir, uh, for his uh, deliverance on uh, flood modeling for ungorged basins. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bharti. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, and uh, my screen, uh, I'm not sure if it is visible. Sir, if you would please share the screen. Yeah, I, I just shared, so but I I don't know. I'll try to share again. Uh, yeah, strangely, it is not visible, is it? Shall I rejoin and if there is an issue? Yeah. Do you have this MS Teams app there? Actually, in the browser should be given permission for sharing the screen and all. Okay, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, it has come. come. Yeah, it has come. It has come now. Okay, okay. So visible now the presentation. No, it is your Outlook email that test come civil web mail enter screen it should display the whole thing i'll do this if this is visible no sir uh, it is not visible no 
maybe that uh, internet is poor. Uh, I, I'll I'll uh, rejoin. Uh, I'll rejoin. Oh, it is visible so, now, sir. It has come. Okay. 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 That's great. Okay. So yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, put in a full view mode. Yes. Yeah, that. Put in a full view mode. Full view mode. Hmm. Not displayed because on screen. Uh, or shall I rejoin quickly? Maybe there is. Uh -huh. It's no problems. You can have. Okay. Shall I rejoin or is it fine? Yeah. Uh, rejoin. Rejoin. No problem. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> In this room, it's not allowed, okay? except the water. Group okay. We'll go for dinner in this Guwahati Grill. Guwahati Grills. Here on the Have some problem. So, my car will be uh, uh, it will drop. Oh. Maybe just after, or you want to leave? Oh. Me? Actually, I would like to hear it. Uh, he is also doing good work. So. Or you can have it in your and that effect. Look at that. Look at that. went well. I saved the last one. Completely. Yes. Uh, can you send the PPT to us? Uh. 
we can have a five minutes break, no? Do whatever is there, we can drink, no? Okay. We can have a five minute break. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. We say if uh, uh, mail to me the PPT. Uh, so you can declare five minutes breaks, no? So uh, due to technical issues, we can have a five minutes break and we will rejoin the session for our last talk. Okay. Oh, rip <laughs> there is refreshment outside. You can please uh, join. Yeah, uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, they have gone for a little refreshment outside. So, uh, meanwhile, we can just try. If you can share the screen now, I can uh, tell you whether it's visible or not. Yeah, I'll just do it now. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll ask the PPT. So, if you can share the screen now. Yeah, he will be sharing it. Actually, he's sharing it. Yes. So is it? Uh... Yeah, just uh, it's a black screen now. But yeah, the the PPT is on. Uh, now, if you just try to put it on a full screen, it's in full screen mode actually. No, the, the full screen mode is not coming actually. Uh, it's just a, a PowerPoint presentation that has opened. So uh, now okay. if you. OK, so you mean, uh, yeah. So now you can yes. see the full screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, just click it. Huh? Yes, yes, now it is. Now you change the slides set. Now it's in the full screen. Can you please change yeah, the yeah. slides? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Now it is working, sir. So uh, can you wait for uh, five minutes? Uh, they are just gone for okay. out a little bit refreshment. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, hello.
Yeah, shall I share my screen? PPT file. It has come. It has come. It has come. I can start. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, so th that's the title of my uh, talk. I have made little. Make it uh, uh, generic. I'll, I'll talk about uh, flawed modeling, data scares, uh, situations, and uh, uh, the challenge. So, importance uh, of flawed model uh, this year in particular, uh, India uh, flooding, extensive flooding in. And uh, uh, of, uh, uh, damage happened because we did not have proper warning. Uh, uh, we don't have warning systems for most. And uh, I will uh, discuss talk. And before that, I wanted to, you know, highlight how a flawed warning system. And so, because audio is not coming clear. Uh, excuse me, one second. So, uh, switch up your video. So, audio will come back. Okay, okay. This is the video. Only your video file. Okay, so uh, is it uh, audio? No, no, just, just. Uh, yes. Okay, actually, I'm not able to hear well properly. So, I'm not sure if. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, flawed warning system works. A typical flawed warning system. So uh, basically, uh, you know, we uh, uh, metallurgical uh, input data and also uh, you know satellite based person uh, basically ground. Uh, uh, you know, it may be ground based or satellite based. So we have uh, many different uh, ideas. Uh, you know uh, that. Uh, in the hydrogen literature, and uh, to to say how it works, so I'll give this uh, uh, you know very old story uh, from India. A group of blind men they went and uh, uh, requested a uh, a king to experience an elephant because they have never experienced. So the king allowed each person touch different part, and the king finally asked them, "What did you?" So the person who touched uh, uh, the uh, belly said that it is like a wall, and task and said that it is like a spear. So basically, our uh, uh, you know depends on what we experience. So we have a varied actually uh, experience. That means there will be various opinions in uh, you know uh, approaches for modeling. And uh, this is uh, one talk I gave uh, in IIT Guwahati. Uh, uh, important. Uh, uh, if you look at, there are two actually different, uh, you know, directions to follow for uh, modeling. Uh, and the term here, uh, the God equation is basically refers to fundamental equation. And the Newtonian paradigm, uh, you know, uh, we can use. It's a metaphor uh, for the, uh, you know, 
we know the fundamental equations, we can solve any problem. So of course that's much easier said than done because uh, you know who decides which is a fundamental equation. Uh, you know, uh, it's a big uh, uh, discussion. If I uh, uh, further, so just to give brief overview, the Newtonian basically approach is the that means we know the fundamental equations and then we uh, you know try to solve the uh, the the key concepts or the uh, fundamental concepts are known to solve the uh, but the other approach is observe the system it's the fundamental equations we know are not useful maybe up with new equations that are more useful approach and i believe that the uh, approach is more fundamental equations uh, uh, models are not so we have a uh, hydrological model with varied comp and uh, it's often like you know we don't know which uh, we should uh, uh, follow so uh, the idea that uh, we should focus fast on observation because uh, if that is the uh, objective, then final model that we that will be much uh, which require uh, you know. So what is the object to focus? So this is something not actually trying to make a hypothesis here. Hydrological complexity modeling at uh, one hour time scale or a daily time scale is much complex than modeling at annual time scale and similarly modeling it's much easier compared to modeling uh, for a very small basin because uh, like you know the uh, uh, getting rainfall data will be uh, very difficult that's an observation to note and the second observation which the the famous booty cooker from hydrological community that came from a at uh, science community and uh, because they wanted to have term water balance and at the long term water partitioning basically depends on a way uh, it's a function of uh, dryness index the long term uh, potential about transpiration divided by long term precipitation actually uh, the relationship is simple that is because if you look at a long time scale uh, precipitation or total rainfall will be equal to total amount of runoff plus total amount of ever that is not true for a small time scale that means we need to fluctuation if we have to do small time scale modeling uh, with the same concept so uh, that means we need to have an instantaneous dryness index because the vertical dryness index average how uh, a watershed an arid watershed will uh, watershed will have a high dryness index watershed will have a uh, low dryness index but if we look at a you know particular landscape and for the dryness index uh, uh, you know is low and during dry period the dryness index is dryness index spontaneous it should vary with time in its dryness index and so that is the model that uh, i had proposed in to the we have a basically two layer uh, that is uh, partitioning Actually, rainfall and uh, available rainfall and available energy, which is in the form of the expression in the form of PT, they use further uh, evaporation. Um, so the base model is a decay function of 10 from the race. This is again question that we need to focus on during recession. Across uh, you know uh, geographical regions, uh, discharge increases with time, following a power law, and uh, uh, you know characterize uh, using a single uh, you know, and if we use and finally minus uh, uh, which is a function, which is a function. This is actually an instantaneous any given instance we can index and then we get uh, 
uh, if it and the discharge that's a simple concept it does not have actually any uh, person and so the original model was applied to uh, about uh, six uh, performance was sent if you compare actually uh, you know similar original models with regionalized parameter prediction in ungauged base in uh, india at uh, 10 i think catchments and trans so quite similar no calibration the uh, you know exact uh, model was applied in india yeah. and uh, we also and study you know about uh, uh, 3000 uh, gauging station with uh, hbb analyzed uh, calibrated hbb actually is giving better performance but if, if we meter then we is actually uh, uh model is actually uh, has a uh, uh, sbb uh, analyzed parameters uh you know this model has an r uh, compared to best model because regression depends on how much it so if we have less data there will be uh, less thing we actually in the we have a which is the recently we have the uh, the k function that the model performance improving in terms in terms of a study pb jr for and both they are fully but if as though you are not audible Pastor, you are not audible. Oh, sir. Yes, your voice is not audible. It is my. I perceive that. Ah, the online participants, can you please indicate whether we are audible? In certain screen, I don't know. It is not audible. They are chatting. You can open the. Hello. Screen. Good evening, sir and ma'am. Uh, the voice is fluctuating. Yes, yes. Let's do it. Uh, I think it's a problem. Can I develop it? Uh, okay, I think we can proceed. Okay. Uh, स्पीकर स्टूडेंट You could please pose your questions now. 
Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I, uh, I think I got disconnected. Uh, am I audible now? Uh, you are audible. I can, can, you, can you conclude the things because... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'll just uh, quickly, you know. Uh, yeah, there are a few uh, important uh, slides. I'll just uh, quickly conclude. So my slides are visible. Oh, not yet. Uh, yeah, is it visible? Yeah. My slides. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Now it's yes. So uh, this is all about hydrological uh, modeling, and then the next thing is about flood inundation modeling. And again, we approach. But before that, I wanted to highlight what is the main challenge in modeling. The typical hydrodynamic model that take a long time. Like if we see, actually, this is a com. Uh, a comparative study with a TVD, which is a conceptual model with a hydrodynamic model, so the MIC uh, 21. So that takes 10 days for the same performance that uh, you know TVD takes only. So uh, it's a very computationally inefficient because of which we don't have a you know a flood warning. Um, so again, we'll fo follow the same. Yeah, yeah, but so they still you have the problems. Basudo, can you hear me? You also talk. Hello. Sir, can you hear uh, us? I, yes, yes, I, I can. I, actually, sir, I am able to hear. Sir, we lost you in between. Now the slides are visible. Not yet, sir. Yes, it is visible now. Quickly, con interruptions. Uh, please, keep, uh, uh, quickly, uh, conclude. To focus on, you know, velocity variations. Actually, velocity varies in time. If we take this general equation, is point for time, only point one for space. That it does not space uh, that much. This actually uh, observation to make simpler. The second. Uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, the Manning equation, observation-based uh, uh, equation, the Manning equation. But I would like to add actually another important question uh, along with it. That is, if we look at any like catchment, uh, of uh, uh, you know um, uh, discharge uh, in the flood plain, uh, contributing significantly is quite low because most of our catchments are heavily modified. For example, if there is a uh, breeze uh, or road, this is actually a canal uh, flowing over a river. The chances of water uh, uh, contributed in the uh, discharge contributes. So we can, uh, you know, uh, observation uh, and uh, uh, model simpler. So by assuming that, uh, uh, you know, the overbank uh, discharge contribution is negligible. So basically what it means that uh, the river level uh, at a uh, river level is uh, you know above and that point has to be inundated so this is a very uh, famous concept called hand h and h drainage so we utilize these uh, uh, observations and uh, the hand concept and of course there are a lot of uh, you know challenges which are now not i'm uh, i'm not discussing so the application we did in kerala 2018 and we found the model performance quite observed uh, you know uh, uh, data were used for evaluating the model comparative study with uh, uh, you know two flow there is a famous uh, uh, model uh, um, and also we used so this is least flood inundation map least flood this map was provided by uh, uh, dr paul bates uh, university of uh, Britain. and uh, we found that our model is pretty comparable to least flood and also and uh, uh, and it has very less uh, run minute for entire Kerala, uh, whereas for a single like you know uh, small uh, uh, two flow takes uh, about four hours. This for a single small this 15 minutes I'm talking about it's for the entire state of Kerala. Uh, so of course the model actually needs 
which to reduce uh, run time further and so you applied the model luciana and again raising performance and the final i would like to highlight that we all applied in uh, the model in uh, nippon river basin and uh, we observed a very peculiar behavior like parts in the flood plain were not inundated so what we realized the backwater effect major contributing factor uh, to flooding and after in you know including the backward we found that the model performance significantly uh, improved and uh, uh, done any comparative study here but i am pretty sure that a complex high, uh, complex inundation model significantly better performance so we like to conclude with uh, that that uh, you know we lead an observation approach for developing new suits our uh, uh, you know condition better rather than relying on some fundamental uh, concepts which may not be useful thank you thank you very much uh, thank you for for vasudev said uh, please have a big clap for him okay uh, i uh, really uh, we are coming to the concluding the sessions because uh, uh, we have uh, almost taken the three and a half hours okay uh, i i do understand it who are watching online li Uh, this program, so I really feel thankful for watching three and a half hours uh, at a distance uh, at a, uh, your comfortable zones. Uh, uh, so uh, we we are just going to conclude these sessions, and uh, you have that <coughs> <in> PPT. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I had my slides, and you can because I made many pretty sure that many people did not actually uh, get my. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice slides. I, 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 I'll try to look at that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. PPT one, I think. Take home. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you, the sir. basically, uh, we'll have just few seconds, uh, uh, few minutes. After this, we'll conclude it and uh, 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 the four. i i i think so we we have to uh, talk about uh, 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 uh these discussions i think that's what we started it when does the northeast regions hydrologic year start uh, i think we'll be now agreeing it uh, it starts from march or the april okay it's not like other places so for, and does it begin in june like the rest of indian subcontinent or can april be considered as at the beginning of the uh, hydrologic years or the water year i think many of them uh, here they agree on that okay so all the data are tending to that part okay so we, we can consider the hydrological year starts from april for north east regions i think professor gotsan can uh, okay so uh, uh, professor tera it's okay <laughs> uh, uh, and the biggest question is that what uh, i could uh, uh, i'll take a note from uh, our expert from professor tera on this uh, because uh, everybody talking about climate change and everybody we we do know it uh, rainfall is intensified the high intensity events are occurring very frequently which is supposed to be a rare events but nowadays we have a high frequency events are very frequently happening it uh the a case of the northeast regions because it is totally a vegetation terrestrial ecosystems control system as compared to and also we have the topography as uh, the prop. so how far the extent uh, this climate change is going to affect these things uh, uh, any view one thing uh, just we don't have a data but you can <laughs> talk about from uh, your experience that uh the uh, <clears throat> from from what uh, water budget point of view on the northeast region we know that uh, the total amount of rainfall is at least june to september now even for from may to september may to may to september also it will is decreasing so uh, there is that issue so that is one one element now but uh, we also know that uh, the extreme events are increasing so what still it is increasing so the hydrological disaster potential is still increasing but uh, your water availability is decreasing but the decrease is about 
about eight uh, percent uh, over the last hundred years or so. So, uh, since our mean itself is not very uh, is is very high, so this eight percent doesn't make a very big difference in terms of impact on the ground. Uh, so, but it is the anthropogenic effects that uh, anthropogenic activity that is causing the the uses of water, the the groundwater uh, uh, uses and uh, and. And and this, uh, bad distribution of uses like cities we are extracting too much uh, and we are using too much so this is affecting the water budget in a sort of usable water uh, in a, is so that is going to increase again in the future so that is what is going to make the big problem so in terms of projections uh, you see that uh, the mean uh, over, even though the water is uh, mean mean rainfall is decreased. Uh, the uh, I think after some time it will start increasing again because moisture content in the atmosphere is going to increase as uh, because uh, the greenhouse gases are continuing to increase. So after some time, so decrease will also decrease. So rate of decrease is actually decreasing, and by about 2050 uh, or something, we believe that it will come back to more or less the uh, uh, normal condition. So. We need not worry too much about the total rainfall, but we need to worry about the distribution and usage. And I think most important thing that we need is groundwater. The groundwater is 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 poorly poorly is not being uh, 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 recharged properly. And so I think we need to concentrate on that. Right now, I think we are having so much a problem about the fresh water, drinking water, and this is because of our bad use of groundwater and then i think uh, even though we have a lot of rain the rain drains off the runoff is very high here because of the topography the runoff is so high that uh, and we cannot really and and storing them in dam is absolutely no solution because uh, already we have about eight dams in this region which is uh, seismically already we are in an unstable situation we cannot build any more dam and even we should reduce that so we need to promote harvesting water by small water bodies. So I think these uh, small water body uh, issue is, I think, need to be highlighted in the, so the government level, in the in the in the, in the uh, private level. Like the, the the I think the people also must even in our even in our agricultural areas we should go back to our pond system. We used to have ponds, but we have just built up the ponds. But we cannot do that. We have to, for sustainability, we have to go back to those pawn system, because uh, uh, so so these are some of the issues that I feel are going to be the important uh, thing in terms of the water budget and livelihood. So as you said, livelihood is is going to depend on how you use the water and how you conserve the water. I think this is uh, is, is 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 going to be the uh, major problem. <laughs> Okay. Uh, can you check in the give me heck a good is there any questions okay if not ha 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 you just put it questions i if he's there or i don't know it uh, thank you uh, sir are you there with us. Okay. Uh, so somebody asked why alone Meghalaya is showing different trends of rainfall. I think Professor Terrell can tell it because <laughs> so he, he spent whole of time in only Meghalaya. Okay. Special, special, how it is special in the rainfall? Uh, so yes. Ah, so too, too much rain because of that. But <laughs> another thing is maybe uh, we see uh, the rainfall process also very interesting. So, so uh, the very steep uh, cliff is there, and so it makes very high. Uh, rising uh, motion of the air. And we experienced some rainfall there. At that time, we had very dense fog. And dense fog is very important because it intensifies the rainfall intensity in the very lower portion of the atmosphere. 
And uh, usually we had a, a, a remote sensing from the space. At that time, so we had to uh, measure just on the ground very difficult. So we have to measure maybe 1,000 meters above that ground. So um, between the, the measurement point and the, the real rainfall at the ground, there are gaps, very difficult gap, 1,000 meter, meter or so. So, but uh, is in this uh, shallow uh, layer, we had a very big difference, a very big challenge. So in this sense, it is very interesting place. So we are putting many hydrometers because of that. So raindrop size is very unique there. Yeah, so it's a scientifically also very interesting point. Yeah, thank you. I, I thank you for uh, uh, Professor Terrell for to give instance, but uh, clear cut, I can understand it much more needed to be studied for uh, understanding uh, the wettest regions in the world. Uh, so uh, we cannot conclude very simple way. Uh, that's the reasons uh, the, uh, the professors from Japan team, they have been working almost 10 to uh, more than 15 years uh, to understand the process. Uh, I, I think uh, we'll have more explanations in the futures about that. Anything else? No, no. Okay. So uh, uh, I think it's uh, quite interesting. We should not take much time. So with this, really, I'm thankful to all my uh, professors, uh, teams from uh, Japan and professors uh, uh, Gosami Sats uh, coming that way from Guwahati City with that. And uh, Professor Katha and Professor Tibeti. And not only that, uh, the whole team of uh, I have uh, this CET group who has been helping us to conduct smoothly this program, even if you have uh, some last minute head cuts, but we have done the things very, and we'll put the quiz for you just to get it, how much you have learned from this. No doubt you can put the questions to us. We'll be trying to uh, reply to you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we would again uh, like uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank all our speakers for today. Uh, can we have a big round of applause for all the speakers? Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir, we can take a zero.